Welcome to The Saints Martini, a cocktails and conversation podcast with your hosts, The Saint and The Halo, Warren and Irish. Yes, welcome back to another podcast of the uh, Saints Martini. I don't need to introduce us anymore, it's already been done. But of course, (laughs) I am Warren the Saint, and of course, with me as always, Irish the Halo. How are you today? How are you going? Hi, I'm I'm incredibly overtly depressed <laughs> about where, <laughs> where I live and what's been going on in my country. But, you know, I'm here and we're going to talk about some other fun things this time because um, it's been very overwhelming living in America during this particular time. And um, it may be end times for us here. We'll see what happens. Like Rome burned. Well, you know, Nero played the fiddle, although I think uh, Trump is a little bit more like Caligula in a lot of ways. But, you know, whatever. Right. Oh, um, interesting. Interesting yeah, analogy. Gonna... Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just, no, I know. It's just very, it's very, <laughs> very interesting um, because uh, because Nero did what he did in a sense for his own personal gain, where Caligula did what he did because the man was nuts. Um, so um, I think Nero is actually probably a better analogy. Well, yeah. Well, um, I mean, sure, but a lot of people don't believe that Trump is in his right mind, especially right now when he's on all these COVID drugs and steroids that actually cause psychosis and delusions of grandeur and well, um, paranoia. And they're just letting him call up onto the radio and talk to Rush Limbaugh for two hours, spouting a bunch of crazy bullshit. <laughs> um, did, did you hear? Dude, it? I don't even know. Like, I know you're on the other side of the globe, so you don't get to see the constant barrage of just fucking crazy that's going on in our country. Um, yeah, it's bad. Oh, but um, how are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, look, I, I'm doing all right. I'm still in lockdown quarantine. Still. I think we're into month three um, or something. Uh, I think this all started back in May or June. We're still going. Mm. No end in sight. Um, rest of Australia and y'all have is... like serious lockdown, not like Florida style lockdown. Oh, no, so... no, no, no. The rest of the country is, is, is doing fine. The rest of the country is, I mean, it's still got limitations. You can't just, you can't go to the cinema and you can't do things like that, but... Um, but the rest of the country is doing fine. You know, shops are open and businesses are trading and, uh, you know, all, all the normal sorts. Uh, uh, restaurants and cafes are operational, but there are strict rules on how, you know, how many people can be in them and how close mm-hmm. you can stand to somebody uh, and all of that sort of thing. But in Melbourne, where I am, no, we are still in full lockdown quarantine um uh, i think we're in month three um everybody still legally has to wear a mask or you get arrested um you the you can't (laughs) you know you can't travel more than five kilometers from your house you can't be away from your home for more than two hours without a permit um you i hear police cars left right and center with their sirens going never heard so many police cars um the um Oh yeah, it's 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 fun times. <laughs> you know, and, and it's a bit like I, I, I said to you during the week. Um, I'm starting to get an idea of what it must be like to do long distance space flight. You know, like the idea yeah. of a mission to Mars. Uh, Yes, it's, it's, I said just, you were going to be qualified at least for the psychological effects of it by the time this was over for you. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's, uh, oh, wow, yeah, oh. It's, it's weird. But for the rest of Australia, hey, Australia's doing great, you know, living with COVID huh. pretty well, looking at opening the borders back up again with select countries who have, you know, who have kind of whacked it on the head, a bit like Australia has. Um, you know, Singapore, New Zealand, that sort of thing, you know, open it up to tourism and stuff again, uh, with the exception of Melbourne, which is where I happen to be, which is still in fucking quarantine. So, (laughs) you know, um, well, you know, here in America, um, in the Trump white house, and I, 
I think it's 32 people in the White House now have been affected and um, have COVID. And they won't tell us when his last test was. And they won't say whether or not he's going to be tested again. And he's telling everybody he's cured um, oh God! Yes, it's I saw this. fucking crazy, man. <laughs> it's just nuts well, here right now. Well, it's, it's, um, it's. I told you I was I was praying for a meteor. Like honestly, yeah. like I just want it at this point. Just end it because 2020 is the worst. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what at least is moving forward next year. Um, if he's not gone, I don't know. I'm gonna sneak out. It's gonna be like handmaid's tail up in here me like trying to sneak <laughs> up to canada or something or just something so yeah uh, um. <laughs> well, 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 what's what's his uh, we uh, we heard his his recording on sean hannity on fox news oh my God. where he, he, he rings him up and it's like it's like Sean, I just want—I can't do the voice, so I won't try to. But you know, it's like, please don't. Uh, no, I won't. but it's like you I know, hate it so much. I know, but it's like Sean. It, it know, causes a visceral reaction. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's it's like you know, Sean. You know, I feel healthier than I ever have in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to let everybody, I want everyone to know, you know, how much everyone loves me. I was chosen by God, you know, to, to cure COVID-19, uh-huh. <laughs> but I'm not sick anymore. I'm a totally healthy. <laughs> I mean, oh, it was, I mean I'm sorry. Yes. How do you tell people that you're fit and healthy, the healthiest person on the planet while you're coughing up phlegm on the radio? It, it, it blows my mind. Because nothing was, is real. He, he was recorded. Nothing was, is real to him. What does he say? It's like, um, you know, it's like, how stupid is the man? He, he made a statement, I think in the, uh, I think it was in the White House grounds lawn or whatever, where, of course, it seems to be that everybody else has to be in quarantine except Trump, who <laughs> seems to be giving well, fucking COVID to everybody. <laughs> he's... um. Like where yeah. he's actually, where, what did he say? He was chosen by God to get this so he could find the cure. He then says that when he was in Walter Reed, he personally chose the drugs to be given to him. Not the doctors. He told the doctors what drugs to give him. And there was someone called, oh, yeah. what is it, Revitasol or something, or Revitalive or something. Revi- which is, Revinogen, I think Revinogen. it is, or something like okay. that. But it's which a is, drug... That's already been created. <laughs> but, but but here's the thing: it's not it. a, it's not a curative drug. It's 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 like if no. you break your leg and you take paracetamol, the paracetamol helps deal with the pain. It doesn't mend the broken limb, and Trump doesn't understand right. the difference. He thinks if the pain goes away, he's cured. Well, he doesn't understand. He's still infected. It uh, the man is I uh, I have to say you know how he says he has the best education in the world whatever what whatever That's schools what oh, I know that but whatever schools he went to I believe they should refund whatever they paid because clearly he is the dumbest man in the world I I I cannot believe he is saying and then he says he's well, put out a presidential what statement that everyone is going to start getting this drug now I mean. What a load of bullshit. <laughs> you uh, know, first of all, um, uh, there's only 50,000 doses of that drug available currently. And it's a um, therapeutic. Secondly, it's also made. No, listen. I know. Yeah, it's made from fetal tissue, fetal stem cells. Okay? <laughs> Which, yeah, it's Ooh. using fetal stem cells. Oh, my um, Pence Which the have research a on that, that has been put on the kibosh and yes and all of those evangelicals and those pro-life people who are so against abortion well hey guys guess what trump wants to make baby cells available for all of you so you know what it's just all bullshit okay he was out on the lawn doing what and 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 somebody else said this on twitter which made me laugh because i had said it to my mother that evening when i had seen him doing this fucking ridiculous video that he was it looked like he was out there doing a reverse mortgage loan infomercial (laughs) 
You know, <laughs> it was like the worst fucking trash thing I'd ever seen. And honestly, I don't remember whether it, I don't remember if it was Lincoln Project or somebody else that put out, and I don't mean to, you know, support them because look, I get it. They're helping us because get Trump out, but also those people are not our allies. Please don't like them just because they're against Trump too. But anyway, they put out an ad. Um, I think it was them. Um, talking about like putting it in an infomercial, everything he's done and showing all the different commercials and different things that he had done, hawking different products over the years, Domino's pizza and just like all kinds of things, his own stuff that failed like Trump steaks and Trump vodka and all this shit, terrible, terrible infomercial style commercials. And then out on the lawn of the white house as president of the United States, doing the same thing for some kind of what he's calling now miracle cure. He thinks he's cured. He's telling people he's cured. It's a bunch of bullshit, which he doesn't even understand what it is or anything about it. And he's promising people, Hey, you can all have this. You can all have it. I want you all to have this drug for free. It's never going to happen. It's a bunch of bullshit, but only after the election, you can have it. You can have it after the election. So just like his healthcare plan and all these things, you know, if you want stimulus money to help you guys not die um, because they've given people $1,200 since the beginning of this in March, okay, and they've been fighting over more stimulus money um, since then. So people got $1,200, and that's been it. <clears throat> and he says, well, you know, in you know, if you guys reelect me, basically, if you don't reelect me, you won't see a dime, but if you reelect me, you're going to get more money. You know, so it's mm. basically a quid pro quo for the American people. But it's all bullshit because he's a liar and a charlatan and a grifter. And you can't. And also these drugs he's on, these steroids are known to cause the psychosis and paranoia and things yes. like that. Nothing that he says at this point is is anywhere near the truth. He's grasping at straws. He's dangerously worried about going to jail because they're gonna as soon as he gets out and he doesn't have the protection of Bill Barr and those people, the states like New York, they're gonna come down on him with these things that he's done, the tax evasion and shit like that, and he's gonna be fucked. Him and his whole family. So that's what we're all praying for. I hoped COVID didn't kill him. I just wanted him to have a nice long, painful recovery and then stand up and, and take responsibility for his crimes in a public square because he needs to be held accountable just like every single politician that helped him and is helping him now. Every single fucking person. Well, it's 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 a bit like... Um, I mean, it's, it's very interesting. You talk about how... So how much was the stimulus uh, package checks? Um, did you say... $1,200 that $1, a person. But that was that was it. You only got one. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, in um, in Australia at the moment, um, the stimulus that was started and the budget was actually released on Tuesday in Australia. Um, so we got to hear what they're going to keep doing to keep fighting um, COVID in Australia. And the $750 a week job subsidy, in other words, companies that are making less money this year than they were last year, they, can, they are paid $750 per person to keep that person employed at the company, right? So they don't get the sack. Right. So they keep working. Right. So in other words, the company, the, um, uh, the government is heavily subsidizing you know, the salaries. That's going to now continue to February. That's going to continue to February now. Wow. Right? Yeah. So, so what it means is everyone who has a job but their companies are losing money, hey, your salary is still going to be, well, at least it depends how much you earn. I mean, I, you know what I mean? Right, right. Um, but, but at least that much. But at least $750 a week of your salary will be covered by the government. So that's going to continue. Um, everybody is going to get around about a $2,000 a year tax rebate or refund. Uh, taxes are going down. And this is not like in America where it's just for the rich. Uh, this is going to be <laughs> for the poor. Well, when we say the poor... Um, that was a bad word to use. I didn't mean to say that. Let's say everyone who's not uber wealthy. It'll be for the people earning under $200,000 a year. Now, I notice okay. I said under, not over. Right. The people earning over $200,000 a year ain't getting squat. <clears throat> right. All right. So the idea is to give money back to normal people to keep them going. 
Also, they're continuing the, if you have to go into lockdown for two weeks, if you, you know, get COVID, right? And you can't go to work for two weeks, because unlike the president, you have to quarantine (laughs) for two weeks, all right? Um, They're going to continue the $450 a week COVID payment. In other words, you get that on top of your $750, right? Uh, That's because you're in lockdown. So all of this is continuing. So they... I'm not a conservative, as I think most people listening know, but you know what? Our conservative government hasn't been too bad when it comes... Mind you, when I say conservative, that's Australian <laughs> conservative. Yeah, uh, that's our Democrats, uh, right? <laughs> which is pretty much your Democrats. That's exactly right. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. by American standards, Australia has Democrats and communists, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, my God. Trump uh, called so, Kamala Harris. A communist yeah. on oh, Rush Limbaugh's show today. Fuck me, I was like, what really? the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, and my kid actually came upstairs and told me he'd seen a video on YouTube. And before the video was playing, there was an ad, and it was a Donald Trump ad. And the whole thing, he said, had like a, a red tone color layover. And in the corner was a little Russian flag. And it was showing pictures of, of Kamala and... Um, and uh, Biden and talking about how they were in with China and all this stuff. And it was like, oh, my God, <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's and he said, you know, I, he said, I know this is bullshit. He said, I know that this is ridiculous. He said, but there's a lot of people that watch these videos because he's watching like people playing video games on YouTube. OK, like walkers yeah. and stuff like that. OK, so guys his age and he's 21. Um, are getting bombarded with these Trump ads that say things like that. And he said, now they're doing Biden ads too. He goes, I see Biden's ads on there. He said, but they don't, you know, come across like this, you know, but the kid has always, you know, he's gotten to vote once and he's voted Democrat and we're just going to keep it that way right now. So <laughs> you, he's a you, good boy. <laughs> <laughs> but you only really have two choices in America, don't you? I mean, it's Democrat or Republican, isn't it? Well, I unless mean... you're a moron in a sense, yes. Because in this, you know, you're wasting a vote, honestly, because there's never, it's not a protest. Nobody cares, okay, if you vote for the Green Party here. Two or three percent of the people do that. That's not some kind of protest. That's not going to change anything. Because the Green Party can't get more than two or three percent. If they could, don't you think they would? You know, um, I think that's the thing. So they want to protest vote by voting their conscience. And, you know, that's great and all. But don't, you know, stand up and try to act like you're some superior person because you're doing something and you won't vote for people who, you know, back in 1982 once said something that offended you. Look, I get it. People aren't fucking perfect. And I don't remember who it was now. Somebody on Twitter said something that really stuck with me. It was a really great analogy. Maybe it's not an analogy. I don't know if I'm using the right word right now. But it was, okay, politics is like public transportation. Okay, it's like the bus system. You choose the route that's going to get you to the closest place that you want to get to. You get off at that stop. Okay, and then you walk to the other place you work to get there. Okay, it doesn't mean that just because the bus you pick up doesn't take you right to the door of the place you want to go that you don't get on the bus. You know, yeah, it's just it. it's and I'm I'm paraphrasing there because, of course, I'm not saying it as eloquently. But I think the thing is, is that people have to understand that there's never going to be a perfect candidate. There's always going to be a bunch of shit that we have to deal with that we don't like about somebody because that happens in our personal lives too. Okay. No matter how much I love somebody or care about somebody, there's a bunch of shit that they've done or that they've said, or that they've, their behaviors that they have that piss me off. Okay. <laughs> <It just laughs> does. And I can't, cause I'm a human being. Okay. And we annoy each other. We do our little foibles and stuff. It doesn't matter how much I love them. There's things about them that annoy the fuck out of me. Okay, but that doesn't mean I don't love them. That doesn't mean I'm not going to support them because I know that they want what's best for me as a person. Okay, people that I love. So that's kind of how I feel about politicians at this point. Look, nobody is perfect. Everybody's going to have done some shit in the past or said some stuff that just pissed you off. But that doesn't mean you turn your back on them. That doesn't mean that they're not still the best option for what we have going. You know, I just... I don't think that means we have to support everybody 
all the time that doesn't go the way we want. I think we have to, uh, unfortunately, take baby steps. Well, because know, there's always going to be too many people in our country that are never going to agree with how far somebody else wants to go. And so part of living in a democracy, part of living in a in a place with other people, part of having a society is learning how to work together to find the best option for everybody. That being said, we have a lot of bullshit in our country, especially, that has to be torn down and rebuilt. But I don't mean burn it to the ground. I mean, let's really, really work on actual solutions and do our best to elect people now, especially be mindful of who we're moving up in the ranks and getting to the point where they can be elected so that in the future, our children and their children will have the kind of society that we want. Because to say, everybody change everything right now, burn it down to the ground and rebuild it, it's never going to happen. It's a fucking pipe dream. And you're going to hurt people while you're doing it. And if you only care about the outcome and you don't give a shit about what's happening to people in the meantime, then you're no better than anybody in the Trump administration, in my opinion. You know, I just think we have to really take care of each other. We have to we have to give a shit about each other. So that's it. I'm going to I'm going to stop ranting. (laughs) Well, see, it's it's, it's very it's very interesting. It's um, I mean, it's like I sit back. As Jeremy Clarkson sort of said, oh, you're American. Welcome to Britain. You'll like it in the free West. Um, the, um, <laughs> it's, if only um, I could get to Britain. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's like in, in, in Australia, like, for instance, when you elect your politicians, um, you don't just get a first choice. You get a second choice and a third and a fourth yeah. and a fifth. We, you can do a protest vote and make your vote count because you get to vote as many times as there are candidates less one. So right. if there are 15 candidates on the ballot, that means that your vote, if you choose the lesser one each time, you actually vote 14 times. So um, that's pretty fucking democratic, I think. It is. Yeah. It means yeah. there's no votes are wasted in Australia at all. Every vote counts. Um, yeah. They don't want to do that here. <laughs> I could imagine so, because the problem is that I would imagine that there'd be a lot of people who vote green who would give their second choice to the Democrats, and then what the fuck would happen then? You know, all of those. So yeah. if if three percent vote green, well, that means the Democrats are three percent down. But in Australia, it means the Democrats get the green and the Democrat votes. Right. However, I think it would be more. Well, was, here the Green Party doesn't really mean anything. We have more independence than we do. Green Party. Right. I know green is big in, in some places, but not here. Mm. See, speaking of Australia, so, it's mean, about about twelve percent in Australia. About twelve percent of the vote. That's big. Right? That's big here. Yeah, that would yeah, be big here. That would be a, that would be that. Yeah, that would be crazy here if they got that. Yeah, they will lot, never get that because a lot of, lot of green politicians had, in in Parliament. Yeah, well, we had people like Jill Stein, who was just another Russian grifter bitch. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm not sorry. Okay. I know a lot of you guys gave money or whatever to her recount thing in 2016, which you should have known was a was a grift. And I'm sorry if you got ripped off because she was never going to use that money for anything other than to support herself. Um, because the stuff she was claiming she was going to do wasn't possible. So it was an audit yeah. we needed, not a recount. Okay, just just so you guys. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like well, I said, let's not talk any more about. No, no, politics. no, no, no. Because there's, there's there's a couple of things we I, we, we need to do first. Oh, go ahead. You now, you talk. First of all, yeah. I have I, I I want to make a public apology, and I want to apologize. Oh, don't do this. Yeah, to Irish, because I didn't take her talking about ghosts seriously last time we spoke. Um, so we're going to rectify that. All right. But before we do, before we do, before we do, uh, because are we either coming up on Halloween or have we had Halloween? Or is it because I'm an oh, Australian, no, we don't. Up. It's on October 31st. October thirty yeah. first. You said that last week. That's right. October thirty first. All right. Yes. So all right. So yes. it's not and that And you know what else away. is funny about that date? It's my mother's birthday as well. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, 
So, <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah. Sorry. I, I was the only myself. child sorry. growing up that could call my mother a witch to her face without getting in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Oh fuck! I love that. I just love it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, that really tickled my. That tickled my funny bone. That I'm sorry. Oh dear. All right. So we will. We will start to go. Oh, that doesn't even go like the Oh, whatever the fuck. Anyway, but before we do, no, that's Twilight what, Zone, I think. But I yes, don't know. it was a bad interpretation of it. Just so I didn't breach copyright on fucking YouTube. <laughs> because we upload to youtube as well as you know every what i don't know google spotify itunes bloody whatever but we just go everywhere basically i Plus, don't know we, we also just, go through our own website we keep saying go to our go to our website you listen to them there you know but the problem is so many people have their own you know, listen accounts. You know, they use Google Play or they use iTunes. So, um, oh, wow. so that's where they listen. No, so that, that that's all fine. <laughs> but YouTube, we do actually upload to YouTube. Hardly anybody listens to it on YouTube, but you know, we it is there for people, and um, <laughs> it hasn't happened to us for at least a month. But we continually used to get strikes all the time. Copyright breach, copyright breach, copyright breach. Really? Was, oh, yeah. Wait, we did? Uh, yeah, you yeah. were keeping this from me. I feel like I'm just Endlessly. hearing this now. It was, because, it was because we were using part of the Saints music. Um, and oh, which, of course, see, belongs again, to... I had nothing to do with any of that. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, no, it was me. Don't worry. And, and in saying this, it was, I know. Only, it was only YouTube, all right? No no one else was, was having problems with it. Um, but my argument was it was under 10 <laughs> seconds. and But anyway, no, YouTube. But YouTube is very funny about music. That is one thing it's very funny about. Um, but it's, um, you can plagiarize a book, but you can't plagiarize a song. Don't, that's YouTube. Anyway. Um, but um, I didn't even know where I was going with that. Anyway, what <laughs> what I was trying to say. Um, it's what's, early in the show for that, Warren. <laughs> so, so um, what is your cocktail of choice? It's only half an hour in before I even asked. Um, um, yeah, I went back to some Pinot Grigio this evening because I didn't want to go anywhere and I had some wine. So um, ah. I thought, you know, I'm just going to go back to this. So well, that's what I did, and that's what I've been drinking. And it's hiding behind my computer so that I don't drink too much too quickly. <laughs> or spill it on your keyboard. <laughs> well, yeah, but at this point, I mean, I feel like it would be a, a blessing for the computer itself. Ah, well, we remember in, <laughs> to have what happen. Is it, what, you and me together, forever in electric dreams. Do you remember that? Um, that was Phil Oakley. Was it Phil Oakley? And the and the okay. human league. Do you I, like the human league? Is that Debbie Gibson? Uh, no, <laughs> the human the human league. Who that was, it, was was that on the young ones? Was it Rick Mayo? Was it? Ooh, do you like the human league? Ooh. Um, the the human. <laughs> the, um, the bad. Me up. Oh, I know. They're so bad. That's the thing. They're like the worst in the world. You know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and. Um, if you want to know what somebody doesn't sound like, listen to Warren. Um, so, <laughs> but, but anyway, there was um, what was it? The movie? Uh, but the theme song was "Electric Dreams" by the I think it was Phil Oakley, Phil Oakey, Phil Oakey um, of the Human League, and um, and he pours champagne on his keyboard, and his computer comes to life. Um. And his computer <laughs> is then able to assist him on his travels around San Francisco um, by getting into oh the power by getting into the power <laughs> grid and you know and all this sort of stuff. And um, you've never seen the movie Electric Dreams? No, I have not. Um, it was. I, it, yeah, it, no, it I was, have it, no idea. It was one of those movies I think of the early eighties that came out a bit like was it um, Tr- was it Tron. Tron, Troy, Troy, Troy. You know the one Tron. where gets, Well, there was Tron. a Tron. Tron. Uh, which is, oh, pardon me. Uh, yeah. From Disney. And um, it was when... <laughs> it was when they were making movies where filmmakers didn't really understand what the fucking computer was. Like it was some magical device. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you know, like like the Grand Wizard Merlin, who had sort of worked behind the equipment <laughs> of a computer. Uh, so you know, you, but you just all you had to do was tap the wrong keys, you know, in the right combination, your computer would to make you time travel. You know, like there was it, it was a computer could get away with anything in the early eighties because virtually nobody had one and nobody understood them. And it right. was it, it's really interesting to watch computer based movies from the early eighties. I find it hilarious actually. Um <laughs> uh, anyway, um yes. <laughs> I'm drinking a another Pinot uh from Geelong oh. in uh, in Australia. And uh, this uh, 2013, and this one is called The Anarchist, which I thought was very, very appropriate. Um, so, uh, oh. so yes. So, um, I, yeah, you know, I, ha- here's... I have, a, I have a, a weakness for anarchists. I do. Yeah, so, <laughs> so here's, uh, here's to anarchy. Woo-hoo. Um, Woo. So... <laughs> so... <laughs> Please don't burn it all down. <laughs> just, just... I, I, felt, I, I, just, I just felt like it was a bit like a bad Frankie Howard film. Uh, you know, it's like up anarchy, you know. It's like, like up Pompeii would carry on up the front. It's like, yes, up Pompeii. Did you ever see up Pompeii with Frankie Howard? I don't I don't think so. Oh, I, I usually, I, if I, any any Pompeii movie I could have found and. You know, as a kid, I would have watched it, though, but well, I don't think I've heard of that one, was actually. It, it was a comedy. It was actually, and the other thing, too, is that he keeps... What was it where you break the fourth wall? Is it, you know, where you keep talking to the audience all the yeah. time? Well, he narrates yeah. the he yeah. narrates the film while the film's going on. Like, they'll cut to another scene, oh, and he'll funny. be there, and he sort of says, oh, thank you for joining me again. And he'll talk you through what's going <laughs> on. It's, it's, and, you know, it's really funny. It's uh, I, I like Frankie Howard. I, I still remember um, hearing... Frankie Howard doing some stand up, and I'm not a big stand up comedy fan, but it was in the 1950s, oh. and he was on a British aircraft carrier in, and it was recorded by the BBC. I think he was in um, Gibraltar, and he was doing a, a show for you know all the crew of the aircraft carrier and everything, and uh, and he's doing his jokes and carrying on, and then he sort of says, "Are there any officers here?" And, of course, you hear a few, oh, the hands go up and so forth. And he goes, okay, from now on, I will speak very slowly. And, <laughs> like, but I, I just, what I loved about it was that British sense of humour where you're allowed to send people up, where it's like, you, you couldn't say that in America or Russia. You can't, you can't insult the military. You can't take a joke at the military. Um you know, I, I thought that was, it was, it's a bit like Eurovision. I remember, God, I'm getting off the track. I, I remember when Eurovision was there in- There is no track. Oh, that's true. When Eurovision was in <laughs> Sweden last in Stockholm and they were doing their halftime show and they were sort of showing what life was like in Sweden to the rest of the world, right? And they had, um, mm-hmm. and they were, they were at a fishing village and they were in a business complex, you know, all the normal sorts of things. And then, and then it suddenly went, do 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 cross to Swedish forces in Afghanistan. And it just shows you, obviously, it's a while ago, right? And, um, and, and they're there, and you can see all these Swedish soldiers there in the desert, all hunkered down behind this sand dune. There's bullets going bang, 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 bang. And you can hear in the officers there, and he sort of says, right, we're going to move forward and take the position. And then someone puts up their hand and sort of says, well, I think we should have a vote on that. Who actually agrees that this would be the right course of action for our society to follow? And then they decide to have an election campaign behind the sand dune while they're deciding what they actually want to do. And, and I and I thought oh, it, 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 that's so Swedish, and I just I loved it, and um, I don't even know where I went down that path. Sorry, I, I don't know. It was just, <laughs> okay. I'll shut up. You're funny. I'll shut up. What? But <laughs> what? I'm so you gotta off stop track. that. Okay, just because um, you say things, you don't get to say. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut up now. You have to quit it. We you were talked about that. We were. I don't. Well, yes, we uh-huh. were. We were talking about ghosts and i'm not gonna say anything because i think a lot of a lot of no there's a lot of interesting ideas and i've we we started talking about this last week uh as we're approaching halloween and i told a ghost story and then i didn't 
kind of I just got into my own world and I forgot that you'd even brought it up and you didn't get to say anything and I'm really sorry. So I would like oh, to talk. Oh, stop apologizing. But what I thought was funny, what I thought was funny is that you declared it all to be not true and then you told everybody that you had a ghost story. So that's <laughs> what I want. I know. Great, it is. It is. It is good, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm not racist. <laughs> so it's like I'm. I'm not racist, but um, well, no, know. no, I don't think it's the same thing at all, Warren. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, I, I want to hear your thoughts coming up to Halloween 2020. Oh. Well, you know, as I said, my thoughts on Halloween are like right now really concerned about what gift I'm going to get my mother that will be acceptable. So, because <laughs> as I said, it's uh, her a new a new broom, <laughs> maybe I don't know. Uh, a carrot. <laughs> um, oh, good lord! Um, it's a whole bag of worms right there. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that was the right. I don't know if that was the right thing to say. <laughs> No, 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 no. Actually, that, 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 that like is stupid. No, All that right. is accurate, though. Anyway, accurate. Um, let, can we take a break for just a minute and come back? Yes, and then most I will, can. you know, then we can get into that. Yeah. Absolutely. Can we do it? Absolutely. We will be. Okay, oh. let's do that then. All right. We'll be right back. And we are back. And. Um, we are. We are. Yes, my bladder feels much better. Now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, now we were talking Halloween. We were talking we were. ghosts, the supernatural, other worlds, the the Ooh. paranormal, the unexplained. And I hope it's past midnight if you're listening. <laughs> just, just to you know, it's a, what was that? Hang on, did the door just, did the window just go? Tunk? What was that noise upstairs, honey? Go and check that sound. I heard something in the back garden. Um, Are you quite talking. finished? <laughs> I told you I'm in a stupid mood today. I really am in a stupid mood. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a ranty, crazy, nutso lockdown quarantine. You're in lockdown. Three months yes. of not seeing another human being. It's just driving me up the wall. Um, so I do I don't blame you. Yeah, but anyway, we. What did talking. I tell you? Don't do it. Don't. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't do it. Didn't do it. Didn't do it. <laughs> didn't. But we, we are talking the paranormal, and what, what? 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 Let's go back to last. What are your thoughts, Irish, on the paranormal? Well, I mean, I think paranormal is a is a broad term. I mean, it is. I I it is it's exceptionally broad i mean that covers all kinds of things from ufos to ghosts to um the fae to sasquatches like anything out of the normal paranormal so i mean specifically are we talking what are we talking ghosts what are we talking well yes i let's i, I suppose what yes, vampires or, are we talking well, 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 okay, well, okay yeah I, I, let's try to <laughs> let's try to narrow it down a little bit yes yeah, so I, I mean there was a a, a a yeti there was a bunyip i don't know if you believe in the bunyip um there was one going through my rubbish bins the other night um that's a joke from an australian tv show sorry it's like um a, 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 a <laughs> <laughs> it was a show called Sea Change um, in in Australia, and uh, there was <laughs> it always used to finish with his father and son doing a little talk, and they were talking about the paranormal at the end of one show, and and the fa- father's talking to the mm-hmm. son, and um, and and, uh, and the father sort of says, uh, "Yes, I don't know, you know, there's lots of unexplained things in the world, you know, and all this sort of stuff," and and someone mentions the yeti. And then, and the sun sort of goes. Oh, and and what about the bunyip? Now, the bunyip is the Australian version. It, it's it's like a supernatural yeah. monster, right? Okay. And um, and anyway, <laughs> and, and he says to the father, "What about the bunyip?" And the father goes, "Oh, the bunyip's real." He goes, "How do you know?" And he said, "I saw." And he goes, "I almost caught one last night going through the rubbish bins." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, I digress. Anyway, why why don't we just narrow the thing down to spiritual ghosts, poltergeists, demons, mm. the afterlife? 
Oh. Um, and everything around the afterlife. Because, you know, t- quite mm-hmm. often when people talk about ghosts, they, they talk about poltergeists or they talk about demonic um, elements as well. So, yes, maybe more in that direction. So I'm trying to do my, oh, late, wow. my, my late night after dark voice. I don't know if people... <laughs> This is some... Okay, no sensual radio voice. Oh, no, no, I, I, was, I, was just, I, was, I was about to say it said like, it's, 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 sorry. Yeah. Well, it's after midnight, and welcome to the Penthouse Club. So, you know, uh, sorry, sorry. I told Don't you I'm in a mood, I'm in a mood, this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, I mean, last time when, um, right before we got off the air last time, um, we had talked about the fact that you had had mm. um, a supernatural experience at some point. Um, weren't sure necessarily what it was, but it was maybe a ghost. And um, I tell you what, I've, I've actually had a lot of experiences that I can't explain. And there's, they scared the shit out of me. Um, I grew up in a family that... Um, my grandmother supposedly was a medium in a sense where she could see and talk to spirits. Now it wasn't that she just was like a, she wasn't a psychic in a sense that she would do like tarot readings and things like that. She didn't do that, but she always had a very interesting ability to know things. And so um, when we moved from Florida up to Nashville, Tennessee in the U S here, um, we moved into a house that was an old house in the middle of um, a suburb of um, of Nashville, which is called Madison. And the house itself had been built, I don't know, maybe in the 40s, but they had built a bunch of additions onto it. And so the house was like the weirdest labyrinth. It was all on one floor and you'd walk into rooms and there would just be doors that would lead to other rooms and hallways that would lead to rooms. And there was a room in the middle of the house, which really had no point. It was a small room in the very center of the house with no windows and four doors. So each wall had a door. And on one of the doors led down to a hallway with two bedrooms and a bath. And it was also off of the master bedroom. One of the other doors led to the master bedroom, which was a massive room with hot pink carpeting and a big, huge picture window at the end of the wall. Like the the wall was an entire window. And so when we moved into that house, because it had hot pink carpeting and a massive window, my dad didn't want to have that room. So my parents gave that room to me and they took another room, which was huge. It was like a the, the house had two kitchens. That's what was weird about it. Like it was an old kitchen and a new kitchen. That's how weirdly it was built, you know, just on additions and additions. And so they took an old dining room, which was huge, and turned it into their bedroom. So we're in this house, and it was the weirdest thing. The house, the bedroom I had had its own bathroom, and the house being so old, if you turned on the water in the bathtub to take a bath or shower, you would turn the handles on. And it would go creak, creak, creak like that. And then you would hear the water rushing up in the walls through the pipes. It would take a second. Mm -hmm. And then the water would come out. So it started not that long after we moved in. I'd be in my bed in the middle of the night laying in the room. And I would hear the handles turn on, on the bathtub. Creak, creak, creak. Okay, it's the middle of the freaking night. And I would hear the water rush up in the wall, and then I would hear water. And I would go in, and now the vanity area had two sinks in it, and it was open to where the bedroom was. But the the toilet and um, bathtub area were closed off in the door, and I would keep that closed because I don't like open doors. It kind of freaks me out in the middle of the night if I see a door that's open. I don't know why. So I would keep them closed. So... I would hear this and I would lay there. It's like three o'clock in the morning and I'm hearing this. And I would hear it and I thought, oh my God, what is that? And so I would get up and I would go into the bathroom. I would open the door and there was steam and the hot water in the bathtub was on full blast. Now this would happen over and over again. It probably happened... Five times in six months that we lived there before my grandmother came to visit. And 
the other room that I mentioned um, that was off of the one that had all the four doors in it, center of the house, freezing cold all the time, all the time, no matter what we did. Um, and that one door that opened to a hallway with the other two bedrooms, if I would open that door and stand there and look down that hallway, I did not want to go down there. There was no reason for me not to want to go down there. It was just two bedrooms and a bathroom and a hallway. But I felt like somebody was standing down there looking at me and like daring me to come down there. So my grandmother comes to visit us for the first time after we moved up to Nashville. And we're taking her on a tour of this weird house that we have. And we get through all the rooms and we come through the kitchen because my bedroom was right off of the kitchen. And she comes in and we show her the bedroom. And I'm like, this is my room. And she comes through and goes, and she stops and she goes, does, does the hot water in your bathtub come on a lot? And I was like, yes. <laughs> like, why? Yeah. She goes, yeah, I'm like, okay, you know, and so she's like, okay, and so we go through that door that leads to that weird room with the four doors in it that's always cold, and of course it was freezing, and we walk in there, and she goes, oh, <laughs> I went, what? She goes, okay, she goes, look, she said, you have two spirits in this house, she said, an elderly man and an elderly woman, she said, the elderly woman died in this room, she said, and the elderly man died in she goes back here and she points, we hadn't taken her down there yet. But she points to that door where the hallway was with the two bedrooms. And I'm just like, Oh God. <laughs> what the hell? And so, okay. So, which was weird because how the hell would she know that my water came on? I didn't tell my mother. I didn't yeah. tell anybody. How would she know that? You know? And then the room was freezing and she said that the hot water in my bathtub would come on all the time because the man um, was cold that he kept turning it on because he was cold. And I'm like, okay, not only is this freaking me out, but now I feel sad. <laughs> I don't know what to think about that. So you've now got sympathy for the this. ghost. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like, like, it's just like, it's like, it's like so, living with Casper. It's like, Oh, it was, really? yeah, it was like, this isn't fun for me, but also yeah. now I kind of feel sad if that's the, the case. Yeah. So she stayed in one of those bedrooms that was down in the end. They were the two guest rooms that we had in the house. And, the entire time she was there, it was like I had no problem going down there and hanging out in the room with her and talking to her and stuff. But as soon as she left again, it was like, you just don't you don't go down there. You just don't go down there. And I felt I don't know what it was. I think it was the man just saying, this is my space and don't come in here. But it was the weirdest thing that she would know that. Right. That's bizarre. Well, I, I, don't you think I, that's strange. I, I think. Well, OK. Look, don't you think she would know it was yeah, weird? Don't you think it's weird she would know the hot water in my bathtub came on all the time? It's very, very That's weird. What I'm it's very, very weird. And mm-hmm. to investigate it further, there might be, you know, the way I think, there might be reasons. However, superficially, from what you've said, not superficially, from what you've said, from the information you've said, <laughs> it is fucking weird. It is really weird. It is weird. Um, it is, it yeah. is really weird. I mean, I, I I can tell you when my daughter was mm, up to about three years old, um, mm-hmm. the she talked about the fact that well she didn't mention but she said that she did talk to this lady in her bedroom from time to time this old lady, right. um, and right. it was it was very interesting because only I knew no one else in the family knew only I knew that. An old lady had died in that house before we bought it. And I wow, didn't want to right. say anything because I didn't want to freak the fuck out of people. Right? You know, you know right. how people... Make them you know, nervous, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, which I mean, is, that which would is, make people nervous. You know, um, and, and uh, which is, it's, it's kind of ridiculous because if you think of how many houses people have died in, that people live in. I mean, there are some people living in houses where you literally, the death toll in that house is probably into the hundreds, you know, or thousands mm-hmm. for some of them. You've got houses that were built in 1600, you know what I mean? Well, not thousands, that's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Why? Yeah. But you know what I mean? You've got death tolls yeah. in the hundreds, you know, so, um, but it's it, it still freaks people out when they think about it. But it was very, very interesting. I always thought that my daughter said, it was an old lady. 
Like it wasn't it was it wasn't a young mm-hmm. girl. It wasn't an old man. Right. If, right. Yeah. But it was now it could it wasn't have just a, a made up imaginary character. Well, sense, well, like it, a, look, it know, could have been a it weird could, bunny or something. It could have been a grandmother figure. Remember too, because my parents didn't live in Australia at that time. They lived in Singapore. So it could have honestly have been a young child imagining a grandparent. You know what I mean? Like that. But, they're, they're, but, mm, but, but, it, but what would they have had that to base it on if they didn't have a grandparent? Oh, uh, well, what would they have based well, it on? Well, I still know what grandparents were. They still had, I mean, um, she had three, did she? Three, no, two. Well, well, no, no, no. She had, well, still has two grandparents. Well, no, no, actually three. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. Three, well, then why would actually. she have to imagine one? Uh, uh, if, if she had had... Okay, so I'm just saying, at that age, what would what was her basis for then imagining a grandparent? Was she lacking one? What, what maybe, was the... Maybe she um, felt that most people have two. She uh, See, okay, so if, if I were to say there were three, three grandparents... Three? Well, it, that's a long story. I won't bore everybody about it, but one was dead because a family remarried, all mm-hmm. right? Not my side, but... A family had remarried, yeah. and one lot was dead. All right, so so technically there would have been three. Um, then there was so there was one set and the other set. One set lived in in where we lived, and the other ones lived in Singapore. Now, everybody else, all other children, had two grandparents. She only had one because mm-hmm. the others lived overseas. Maybe it was trying okay. to. However, I don't bloody know. I mean, I have absolutely. I think you're. No I think idea. that's a stretch, honey. Um, <laughs> I think that's a stretch for a yeah, three-year-old. But two, but, two, but it is two, but it yeah. is it is interesting of all people that she conjured up, or that she mm-hmm. said that she saw, I'll, I'll or didn't that. conjure up. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah, so what I said. I'll rephrase that. That yeah. she said that she saw. Yeah. It was an old lady, mm-hmm. and that is interesting. I think. Um, right. Well, I think that probably a lot of places probably have either, like we talked about before briefly, um, either a type of residual energy, which can be imprinted, um, people who do a routine or something traumatic that happens if there's, um, you know, the right type of stone, like quartz and things like that sometimes, and, you know, they can, things can be imprinted, energies can be, not, might not necessarily be an intelligent haunting, it's not a ghost per se, but it's a residual energy that sometimes people can perceive, um, and not everybody can, because not everybody I think is sensitive to that stuff, but sometimes I think it might be an actual resid, like an actual haunting in a sense where a spirit is trapped from unfinished business or something else, who knows? And then sometimes I think there can be malevolent entities that are not necessarily things that were spirits per se, but are negative energies that can affect people in a sense but i'm not saying i think i believe i don't necessarily believe in demons and angels and stuff like that i don't yeah. think that i just think maybe there's different types of energies in the universe that we don't necessarily understand i don't know what they are um i do think sometimes as we talked about before i believe in reincarnation so i do believe the soul lives on so i do believe at times things can get trapped here people souls can get trapped um until they're able to figure out that it's okay to go. Um, that's, in, a, in my opinion, sometimes that's what hell is for a soul, is a self-induced hell of repeating something traumatic that happened to them over and over again. Isn't, I don't know. I don't I know thought, if that's the case. But isn't that, according to Catholics, isn't that meant to be, yeah. there's a word for that. There's a term for that, a purgatory. Purgatory? Yeah, purgatory. Okay, well, I don't know because I'm not Catholic. So I don't really abide by Catholicism. Oh, so, no, no. I'm just, um, I'll just, I'll just mention it. Yeah. No, but I'm just saying in regards to like the Episcopalians, which my grandfather was a Episcopal priest. We talked about that before. Church of England um, for non Americans. on that side, they don't, yeah, yeah. So they don't believe in purgatory. There is no purgatory. Nobody goes, unbaptized babies don't go to purgatory to be prayed out, okay? Um, that's not how that works for, for Episcopalians. So at least with the Anglican Catholics, not so much. Um, there are differences there, but anyway, um, I don't, I don't know what it is. I just think sometimes the energies that are left and cause I think I've told you before, um, I think energy uh, nature is cyclical and energy doesn't, it's not destroyed. It only changes forms. So I think we're kind of doing that in a sense, but 
regardless, I've had too many things happen to me in my life and also other people that I know that have happened um, and people that I've had mutual experiences with to not believe that there's something beyond um, what we can see. Uh, I don't know what it is. It could be a separate dimension. I don't really know. I just feel like there's a lot of shit we don't understand. And um, sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. I lost you there. Oh, no, no, Your mic's no, a little no, no. low. Sorry. No, no, sorry. Um, Did you step away there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I just, sorry, I just, I just, I, yeah, that's all right. No, I just had an out of body You got to remember, you got to come back to the mic to talk I know, to me. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. I, I, was, I, was, I was just going to say, do you think that people like me, okay, have been far mm-hmm. too influenced by clear and obvious phony ghost stuff that people carried on for far too long and swore it was real. And and I will give you examples of this, okay? Um, the Angels of Mons, the Amateurville Horror, these sorts of situations which we know are fake, but for mm-hmm. so long throughout history, people swore black and blue that, that it really happened. And mm-hmm. do you think that gives people like me an excuse to then write off other things? If you get what I'm well, going okay. with that. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Okay, so here's the way I'm going to pose this to you. Um, there are people who are out there as charlatans who pretend to have cancer. Mm. Does that mean that you disbelieve everybody who says they have cancer? Good you point. Think they're all liars. Really, really good point. That's Marge. my question. Really good point. Some people are going to just be fucking grifters and liars and want attention and they try to do whatever it is, but that doesn't mean that other people don't have these valid experiences. So, um, yeah, I think that's the way I would look at it. And I'm sorry, to, I'm not trying to make light of anybody with cancer. I'm just saying, like, no, no, just no, because no. some people fake something doesn't mean that everybody who claims to have that. You know, you, those things you, are you, just faking. Oh, no, no. But do you think it's a problem that some of the biggest ghost stories of, let's say, the 20th century, all right, or 20, 21st century, um, have all mm-hmm. have, have kind of pretty much turned out to be fakes. Um, but well, but it, it's, it's these huge stories that turn out to be fakes. But these individual or small family group issues or, you know, sightings, experiences, we don't mm-hmm. really investigate them. Um, but, like, for instance, the Amateur... Oh, you Bill. haven't seen the Travel Channel. That's all they well, do now. <laughs> oh, really? What, 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 what is oh that? One, God, of those, yeah. one of those... Go- I think I mentioned this before. One of those ghost hunter shows mm-hmm. where they, they went they went to fucking... Uh, where were they? They're in Germany somewhere. Um, and they were trying to communicate with the spirit of Adolf Hitler. And they did it by talking in <laughs> well, English. Well, he died in Argentina. Well, so. I know. But they did it... <laughs> By sort of talking in fucking English. I mean, yeah, I know. Says, Adolf, Adolf, are you It's here? a show, Adolf. dude. It's like, really? Seriously, you can't get someone that speaks German for fuck's sake? I mean, things like that Warren, blow my you're, way. You're, it, um, it's, they're just TV, so, D- I, TV I know. shows. Okay, but, those but, are TV but, shows. All right. Um, and see, here's the thing. I think what you're saying are the biggest ghost stories. The only reason they got to be big ghost stories, okay, are, is because somebody picked the story up and turned it into a movie, which is sensationalized. Yeah, but the okay, angels, and then those people capitalized on this or that or the other thing. But the problem is, well, the I don't angel, know about the angels. Well, I have the, no idea what you're talking well, about. I, I, you've never heard of the Angels of Mons? Of, of Mons. Um, no. the, okay, um, the Angels of Mons in in 1914, where Britain literally had its back against the wall, France had fallen back. Britain was trying to hold the line against the German advance through Belgium. And um, mm-hmm. the Britain decided to make a stand at a railway crossing called Mons, and it um, anyway it, it it was it was a big battle. During it, supposedly this story came out that standing in front of the line of, of British soldiers, you know, firing into the enemy, were all of these mm-hmm. archers, archers, you know, from the Hundred Years' Wars, you know, Asian Corps, all that sort of stuff, mm-hmm. you know, King Harry and stuff, mm-hmm. um, who, you know, Joan of Arc. And they're all standing, and they're firing their arrows into the Germans as they approach. 
Um, you know, and, and the Germans okay. are falling by English bowmen, you know, from the Hundred Years' War. And and the whole thing, it all came about from a poem, a small poem, that was written by a small-time newspaper writer who was embedded, if you like, with the British forces in Belgium. And he wrote this and sent it back, called The Angels of Mons. And the problem was, from there, okay. it then turned out that the people thought, oh, People really witnessed this. It really happened. And then you had soldiers come and say, oh, yes, I saw that. I saw that. Oh, yeah, we, oh, we saw the angels standing there. They were firing their arrows in. And, and it's like, no, it never, it never happened. But it, 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 what is it? It's like when the story itself becomes alive and then people swear well, they witnessed it just because some – do you know what I mean? And, and that was the story yeah, of the Yeah, but I think that that's a different of kind of instance – Right. Yeah, I think that's different in a sense. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, if you go back to even things like, do you remember the young ladies um, who said they saw the fairies um, in the tw- Arthur Conan oh, Doyle? I, I um, don't t- he, he went to really his believed. Death, he went to his deathbed. Yeah, okay, that. so he yeah. really, he really believed those young ladies. Okay, yeah. he really totally believed them. Those girls made that shit up, but he really believed it. And I so I don't know. What happened there? I'm not saying I believe they were fairies. I really believe those young ladies cut some stuff out because you can look at the pictures oh, and see yes. that they're 2D no, images yeah, stood up next to them. Like, there's no doubt about it. I mean, they they were cut out of something and colored and put on hairpins and stuck into the ground. Okay, look, I get that. But he t- had to totally believe that shit. So I think people who... Yeah, you know what? I don't. I don't know how to describe that. I think people can get caught up in in, in an idea of something. Oh, sure, as, as a but, young child. But I. That's a diff, That's a that's a, that was a big story already. That's almost those people who just want the attention, like I was talking about. You yeah. know. It's those uh, guys. Uh, oh yeah, but, that they saw oh, the angels. Oh yeah, what, what's, it's like when I I remember when I was a child. Um, so this would have been when Amateurville first came out. Uh, I remember staying up late when I really shouldn't have been staying up late, watching some late night talk show mm-hmm. where they had the husband and wife from the Amateurville house, you know, of, of the story, the, the book, right. the Amateurville house. And they were being interviewed and they were telling their story. I couldn't sleep for fucking weeks after that, hearing the stories that they told. <laughs> right? and, and that, and this, and, but here's the thing. Because of what they did, which we now know was all fucking made up, um, Mm -hmm. how many children did they terrify? But then again, maybe that's not a bad thing. You think they care about that? Like, no, listen, listen, that wasn't their fault. Somebody made a movie, okay? These people were charlatans in a sense that they saw an opportunity to make some cash No, 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 but but they wrote the book before the movie. They don't give a flying fuck about how many kids they got scared. That was the point of the movie, wasn't it? It made them money. So yeah. they don't care about that. That's the problem. We have we have people right now like that running our government. They don't give a yeah. shit who it hurts or, or who it frightens or what it does as long as they get theirs. That's it. That's all that is, okay? I don't know. I don't I've, give a – you know, it's fine if they wrote – if the movie was out there. But I, I, don't, no, no. I don't like people making them. I I agree. No, I was just going to say, and to all Americans listening, this is how you have a debate. It's friendly. We have opinions. We say different things. We don't shout over the top of each other. Just my little point of view there. I I I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. This is how you have a debate. We may not agree, but we'd have a fun chat about it. You know what I mean? Um, No, no, no. You Um, make no actually No. Seriously, you make actually some okay, really, so, no, you make some really good points. You actually make really good points, um, which is you know, like no, you really do, and um, that's I mean, just quite often I've often sort of said, oh, I write this off. Oh, I write this off. I write it off before I even listen to it. Like someone sort of says, oh, I've got a ghost story to tell you. I've written it off before they've even told me. Do you know what I mean? I that's, know. That's not. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I know. Tell me about it. 
<laughs> Tell me about it. Warren wrote off my ghost stories before I even got a chance to say them. Oh, really? I just told like one of my most mild ones, and you're already you know picking it apart. But okay, oh. no, 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 hang on. I haven't picked your no, stories teasing. apart. I'm teasing. I haven't picked no, your stories. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Uh, Cut it out. Um, yeah. No, I know. Don't. So no, but it, but it's 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 like yes. Uh, I, I, do, do you know? I personally think one reason why I do it. This, you know, people might be interested to hear this, is that I think that if it's real, okay, if ghosts and hauntings and demons and poltergeists and all this sort of shit is actually real, I find it one of the most terrifying things that there is. I mean, I find that whole concept terrifying, so terrifying. That's why you don't want to believe it. That I think in my, my <laughs> you mind. You refuse to believe yeah, it. No, no, no. I, I do actually wonder whether this is the, the whole, the the guts of it. You know what I mean? Um, is that God, I, 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 I write it off. <laughs> I write it off. I just meant in general for life. <laughs> I, 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 know. I write it off simply because. I, I cannot accept something that terrifies me so much. Do, mm. Does that does that make sense? So, oh yeah, the, I mean, so I think the, a lot of people do that. They deny things that they don't yeah. want to think about. Yeah, it's a survival mechanism. If I tell myself and convince yeah. myself this stuff does not happen and it's not real, then it can't hurt me. Huh. Um, well, that's that's. Just I mean, a, that's one way to look at it, I guess. Yeah, I, I just wonder what I your thoughts are on that, us. to be honest. Like, I'm not, I, I, it's not something I think that can necessarily hurt us, per se. I'm just, I think that it exists in a way that we, some people can perceive it and others can't. Some people are affected by it and others aren't. And it might be a vibrational thing. It might be a frequency thing. I don't know. But... Uh, I just know that I've had too many really fucked up experiences. And the one I just told you was really mild. It's just yeah. kind of an example of, you know, the way I was raised in a sense with these people that were able to say things and do things that you didn't expect. You know, my grandmother, the same grandmother, um, was called a witch child by her family. She grew up in an Appalachian area in uh, rural Tennessee, out in the east area of Tennessee, where the Tennessee Valley Authority is now um, they actually – her, a lot of her family lost land during that. Um, but she was one of those kids that people looked at and were freaked out by because they saw things and heard things that the others couldn't, and it just freaked them out. So they called her witch child growing up. So, I mean, I grew up knowing weird shit. But I can tell you what, some of the stuff, like later I was um, – I can tell you this is weird. I was living in this house um, in Nashville uh, where I was living with uh, Tim's parents at the time in between uh, college, like in between when we were at uh, summer, I guess, basically. What the fuck am I saying? I can't think. Um, Sorry, guys. Um, (laughs) So I was living there and. I, you know, we weren't married at the time and his parents being the way they were, of course, even though we were dating, um, I had to live in a, I had to sleep in a separate room. So I ended up in the guest room, um, which was across the hall from where Tim's room was and his parents' room was all right up there. It was a three bedroom, one and a half bath house. The bathroom was up there and all three bedrooms. And in between Tim's room and the room I was in, uh, was a closet that went like both on, you know, each side back, back, back to back closets from the room. And then it went straight down into the laundry room down beneath. And the house was um, three levels. So it had the upstairs level, the main level of the house. And then all the way down from where those closets were, the laundry room was, it was down in this den. It was a sunken den buried down into the ground. And that area of the house where the laundry room and the den And the bedrooms in that area were all just the weirdest, freaky things. You just, like, if you stood at the top of the stairs looking down into the den and it was dark down there, you just, again, like it was in my hallway Mm. in my old house, you didn't want to go down there. You felt like there was something down there. And the bedroom I was sleeping in had a lot of antiques in it. It had an old brass bed that had belonged to Tim's mother's grandparents and, um, you know, an old, like, couch from the 1800s and a and a, I mean, like it's filled with antiques and stuff like that but when I would go to bed at night in that room the bed 
where my feet was, was like right down by that closet. And I don't know what, it, I've never been like this in my life, but I was terrified in that room because I felt like somebody was standing at the end of the bed every night, okay, looking at me. And I would go into the bed and cover up my head and I would pull my feet up because I thought, I, like, I, I literally mm. could not get this idea out of my head that something was going to touch my feet. Like, yeah. I don't know, like, that's the weirdest thing I've ever felt. Okay, so having this experience in the house just already, it was bad enough. But Tim worked a late night shift at a bowling alley during the summer, so he was gone. And Kathy, my mother-in-law currently, um, worked as a nurse, worked a night shift. So at the time, it was just Tim's dad and I in the house. And Tim had a TV in his bedroom. So one night, Tom, Tim's dad, was downstairs in the den watching TV. And I was upstairs, and I had gone into Tim's room, and I was watching TV in there. And I was laying in one of the beds because he had twin beds like, you know, teenagers. And so yes. um, I'm in there, and I'm watching TV, and I, it's the bed close to that closet. It's the one on the side closest to that closet area. And this is – his bedroom had a door that was off the hinges in a way. It didn't fit. So if you wanted to close it, you had to really kind of push it. And it would mm -hmm. shove into the door frame because it was just off balance. And so if you wanted yeah. to open it after you did that, you had to pull it. And it would make a big noise. It would go, bam, and the door yeah. would vibrate, blah, 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 like this. So I'm in there, and I had shut the door. And I'm watching TV, and I stretched at one point, and I rolled over onto my stomach for like a second. And I wrapped my hands around the pillow. And so I had my head turned to the side, and one of my ears was up. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, my ear, very, very clearly, I heard, Shannon. Which, those of you who know me know that's my given name. Not Irish. So, um... Really? Sorry. Like, whispered you, you... straight in my fucking ear. Straight yeah. in, and it just went, Shannon. Like that. Yeah. And I flipped over as fast as I could, and, okay, toward the closet, because that's the side that it came from. The door was open to the bedroom. But you didn't hear no the sound. door open. I said, okay, this, the okay. door did, yeah. There was no sound. See, that's okay. the problem. Nobody else is in the house. That's that's molecular manipulation. That's getting really fucking I weird. I don't know how that like, happened. Well, no, I, that's I, what I'm I, saying, right? So when that happened, Lil Warren, I flipped around and looked and nobody was there and the door was open yeah. and it was only open just a bit, like a crack. And I just yelled really loud all of a sudden because I didn't know what the hell that was. I just said, don't you ever do that again like that. And I got, was, cause I was mad and also terrified and I got yeah. up and I walked out of the bedroom and I went straight down to the den and sat down on the couch next to Tim's dad and watched TV for the rest of the night. I didn't say anything, but I was fucking horrified. It was the most frightening experience that I have ever had. I and it's not the only time like, things in that house happened. Like that house was filled with something. It had something. And I and the land right next to it had a Civil War battlefield area in it. And this farm. So it was, was next it was, to it. It was I on don't a battle know. site. It was on a like an old yeah, war battle site. Right where, next to it. Where literally yeah. every every house in the town surrounding a battle site turned into a mateship hospital. Or make shift. Yeah. Sorry, red wine. Um, make well, I don't shift think there hospital. was a house there at this point because the house was oh, that old, but the land okay, itself, right, right. I'm not sure what happened on it. You know? but see, but, but the see, house had probably been built in the 70s. But see, this is this is the thing that I find really weird. Like, because I, I hear contradictions. And now, I'm not saying I don't believe you. Please, that's not what I'm trying to say. Because I think that is one of the freakiest. Well, because no. <laughs> I know what happened. Well, it's for, fucking crazy. First of all, I would you know I would never actually do that or say that to you. All right. First of all, um, <laughs> one one because I'm too scared to try to, 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 to try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too scared. No, but secondly, You're it in would Australia. Just, uh, I know, but but secondly, it would just be <laughs> fucking disrespectful and rude. All right. So I am not by any means <laughs> saying anything like that. What I find interesting about it, though, this is just, I'm trying to get, want to get your perspective. What I find interesting about yeah. it is the idea of the door, okay? Now, the voices, we've heard all stories about, you know, people hearing voices. I, I think, how many of us have heard things before? With 
Okay. What what I'm blows sure. my mind about the whole thing is the door opening and closing when there wasn't a house. Maybe when the when it became spiritualized, there wasn't physically a house there. So that is an interesting concept. Number two, what? I, I'm, I'm, I, I find it difficult to believe, and I'm not saying that what you heard or saw was not real to you. I am not saying that at all. But a door, <laughs> when a <laughs> door fucking physically opens or shuts, it doesn't matter if a ghost pushes it or doesn't, it's still going to make the noise unless you change the composition of the fucking door. Do you, you get what I mean? I mean, oh, see, that was. That's well, yeah, the I didn't. Here's thing. the thing, Warren. I did. Okay, you know what? Your logical mind can say that to you all you want. All I know yeah. is that I didn't touch the door. Okay, I didn't see the door open. Mm. Okay, it was just open when I rolled back over. When I flipped over, it was yeah, it was open it was already. Open. It wasn't wide open. It was only just open. So I'm not saying I still that fucking... I saw it open. I still got deuce bumps. It just because I don't understand it doesn't mean that I don't that I that it can't be true. You know, you still you still know that you freaked me. I know that I you freaked me. Fuck it. Okay, well I know what happened because you said you freaked me out. I believe you, and and, I fucking believe you. You freaked me. Yeah, and at the time, and at the time, I didn't do any drugs or drink anything. I was a very good girl then, so I wasn't like you know wasted or something. No, no, no. So no, I, that I'm definitely not, happened. I, I mean, yes, I'm trying to put my own perspective on it, which I hope you don't find offensive. It's just me putting my own perspective on it. Um, I know, but, I'm just saying, you but think you I haven't freaked done me that out. for the decades that it's been since this happened? <laughs> I know, but you have freaked me out. That's, fucked me up, man. Look, I, I, look, I, I, <laughs> it fucked me up. I mean, I've, we mentioned last week an experience I had <laughs> when we were actually on yes. Skype together when it happened. Um, I know. Right. I know. Um, uh, but yeah. when when I was young, I can still remember seeing somebody walk down the hallway of my parents' house at fucking two in the morning. Um, I, I still mm-hmm. remember that. Um, and something else happened. I still remember when I was in my early 20s, which I won't go into on air because it's just a bit weird. I won't go oh. into that one. On Oh, uh, no. I, I, I actually wonder whether there was a bit of hallucinogenic going on. Well, I, I just Ooh. from well from things I've heard since, I'm just there's something about a certain story that I, I just don't think I should say it publicly. Oh, well, um, then don't say it, and we'll talk about no, it later. Yeah, um, off air. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's just I I think there was something I don't know. Um, <laughs> mm. I'll, ju- I'll just something. say I'll just say oh, no I'll just say because is it because you can't wrap your head around what happened house under renovation gas leak <laughs> gas leak oh gas we leak. talked about that um, we talked about that yeah okay. I, 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 it wasn't I, a I, gas leak I, I don't know I, I well, don't know you didn't smell any gas I don't know and the other thing too is they it, had to keep there's going. a smell in gas and the other thing too is that they never found a gas leak later on because I know the people who own that. Anyway, it's another story. People listening don't know what I'm talking about, and I don't want to bore them. No, nope, but with I know. Something. And it, um, he's just making excuses. I, anyway. <laughs> That's all. It was weird. And, it was but, a weird thing, and maybe but you have, someday do you, you have, can tell it on air you have, if you like. It. Yeah. Do you, do you have any other amazing experiences that? That, that have happened? Now, here's but well, here's another one too. Not just ghosts. Have you had any other? Um, experiences within the paranormal that we would call the paranormal um, outside no, <laughs> outside the normal, right? Um, whether that might be... I mean, look, yeah. I, I, I have a friend who was a pilot. Um, what do mm-hmm. you mean? Civilian pilot, you know, flew Cessnas and, you know, yeah. Piper Cherokees and that sort of stuff, right? So, um, right. but he, um, he still swears to this day that he saw something like let's call it a UFO that didn't make any sense. In other words, what he saw. Right. Um, right. I've, I've never seen anything like that. I have to admit. Um, the, as, as there been, I, I know I have a, an acquaintance. I wouldn't call him a friend. I would call him an acquaintance who truly believes that they have seen a demon as in another, oh. What they call a demon, though, which is very interesting, what she calls a demon anyway, it's nothing to do with Christianity Uh and stuff like that. 
a demon to right. them is it's a creature that lives in it's an interdimensional creature right in other words it's okay. a creature or a life form that lives in a different dimension which is able to cross over dimensions from time to um, it's, it's nothing well, see, to that's do kind with... of what I was saying before. Like, I don't know what, what some of this stuff is. Maybe it's something like that. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to the concept of it. Um, yeah. So no, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no. So I just wondering whether you'd had any other types of experiences. Just mm-hmm. I, I, it's what I'm wondering, like, do you, have you ever felt that you've maybe had a bit of, you know, how people often sort of say, Oh, I'm psychic. And, and and the first thing people always do when someone says that is they laugh, you know, under their breath. Um, but if somebody actually talks to you in all seriousness and says, a lot of stuff happens to me and I wonder whether I do have an ability, then you take them seriously. What I don't take seriously is a woman who walks up to me at a party, you know, with a Cosmo in their hand and goes, oh, I'm a psychic. What do you do? It's like, what, that's your job? You know what I mean? That That's what I'm trying to say. But well, did, well, there's did, a did lot of people out say? there that make a living doing mentalism in a sense, which is what, you know, yeah. a lot of people who do like um, tarot readings and stuff like that, they, what they are are mentalists. They're not psychics, okay? And somebody once told my mother if they could teach her to read to, to be a, you know, a medium and see the, and, and that was what was a bother. You know, it was kind of a ridiculous statement. It's like, you don't teach people to have an ability. Okay. Yeah. that They should have innately now. Okay. So I do believe, and I, and I'm very cynical. Okay. I'll be honest with you. I see a lot of stuff. I see a lot of people doing things. I don't trust most of them. It takes a lot to win me over. I've had a lot of psychic readings, not that I would go out and pay for them, but I have people in my family that pay for them. And so they go, hey, let's all go get them. So you do. And almost every time it's been ridiculous. But I, I will admit there's been one or two that have been so like not just generalities on point, but like really specific details on point. Maybe two people in the entire time I've had them done. Believe me, guys, I do not go out and seek out psychic readings. OK, I don't. Buy into divination. I have friends um, who no, I have a real. I have a okay. Look, I pull a tarot card from time to time, things like that. Okay, but I am not a person who buys into the whole pendulum thing, that kind of stuff. I'm not a person who like I understand how to manipulate a pendulum. If I want it to go in a circle, all I have to do is think it's going in a circle. It's going to go in a circle. I can manipulate it. There's no way. Hang on, what? That is a divination tool that you can trust. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry. Hang on. You can take an object and and make it move. mm -hmm. Sorry, is that what you're saying? Yes. Um, Yeah. Okay, that's... Okay, that fucking freaks me out. Um, Seriously. Well, a lot of people do that. Yeah, that's not not some kind of a weird power. Really? I I, I mean, it's not some sort of weird power. No, I mean, there's... No, Warren, there's toys that can do that now. That you put on a little helmet and it reads your thoughts and the car goes, okay? Really? It's like a oh, little toy uh, car and it no, goes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Okay, so here's... No, but that's different. Okay, okay. You're, okay. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that I'm putting on a helmet to do it, but I do believe if you're holding a pendulum in your hand, because I've done this a million times, okay? Mm-hmm. It's a thing my family has tried to use over and over again. It started as something that I grew up with when people would take your wedding ring off if you were pregnant, put it on a string and hold it over your belly. And if it goes in a circle, it's supposed to be a girl. And if it goes back and forth, it's supposed to be a boy, okay? You know what? You can hold a pendulum like that. And Well, at least I can, and I know a lot of people can, that all I have to do is think about what direction I want it to go, and it goes. It's not something that's going to tell you the fucking future, okay? It's the same thing in regards, in my opinion, to what the Ouija board is, okay? Now, I grew up using a Ouija board, and I say Ouija because that's the proper way to say it, and y'all can kiss my ass. Anybody who says Ouija, you sound like a goddamn hillbilly, and you need to stop. We've had this conversation before. (laughs) Former co-workers... Yeah. One of my former co-workers on a project, um, I worked on WMAC Masters. He was a, a PA, the, like the um, key PA on the show. He went out to California and, and started doing some films out there. And he worked on those Ouija movies, okay? And he said Ouija, 
And all of the trailers said fucking Ouija. And I said, James, why did you do that? You guys had an opportunity to teach people mm. how to say this thing properly. He goes, yeah, well, we discussed it. And we just decided to go with the most hey, common way I to don't... pronounce it. Hey, no, you knew the, the it doesn't matter made... if it's fucking hey, wrong. Hey, no, no, sorry. You knew the guy that did Ouija 1 and Ouija 2? Or Ouija, I well, will he, say, but they Ouija. Pre- yeah, no, they called it Ouija. That's what it is. I know. But um, sorry, you knew, I know you, a you knew producer him. On, I know a producer on the film, yes. Because, and was oh, part of the whole team, yes. Oh, wow. Because I, I think His name is James an, Moran. They're an amazing, His name is James Moran. An and amazing he was, set of films. They're an amazing set of films. I, I really like them. I haven't watched them. I haven't watched them. I'll be honest with you, because I have a terrible problem watching any kind of horror movie. Well, <laughs> I just, I, uh, I wasn't allowed to watch the, them growing the, up. To, can I just tell you, the second one is especially yeah. clever, because they bring half the cast of the original one back to do like a Comic-Con type thing, where they say the first movie was a movie, right? It wasn't real. It was a movie. And the actors oh, okay. played themselves... As the actors from the first movie, when a real haunting then happens. Oh, that's kind of interesting. A, no, I did not know is, that, actually. Is, I, I, I was so annoyed sequel, with the way they pronounced it. Oh, okay. <laughs> the first movie, I'll be honest with you, the first movie is... I'm oh, petty. Well, it, it's just, it, it, it's a it's a cheap, <laughs> you know what I mean. It, but it's, it's an all right film. The I second know. one was okay. fucking clever. The second one is super, super clever. So hats off to your friend because that was a really oh, no, clever concept. I was concept. super excited for him. Um, yeah, yeah really, really clever. That he got really to that point clever. for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really yeah, clever. Because he deserved really it. He was a hard worker. He had been on Sequest DSV before that, and then oh, he came over I to love WMAC that Masters. Fucking show. I love that show. Sequest. <laughs> They shot at the same time we were shooting um, at Universal Studios here in Orlando, Florida, on the sound stages. They shot on one of the sound stages. We were shooting on another, and then right. they wrapped um, on it. And then when they did, when the show ended, uh, James came over and got a job as the key PA on um, WMAC Masters. So it was pretty cool. Oh, wow, I love Sea Twist DSV. I thought it was. You, you know the thing I love? It was action adventure with an environmentalist message in the fucking late yeah. 80s. I thought that was really, really well, that was good. in the 90s. That was the was 90s. The 90s. Don't you age me. Hang on. Was it the 90s? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, early, totally early, early, early 90s. Early? No, was it? Early 90s, yeah. 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 Oh, I thought it was the late yeah, 80s. I don't know how many seasons it was on. I don't know. I, I, no, it's, it's, I, don't I, hate, so. I hate to say it, it's all a fucking mystery. I, I definitely now. wasn't out of high school. Someone said to me, talked about the Falklands War uh, the other week, and, and I sort of said, oh, when was that, 1990? And they said, no, 1982. I said, what, really? It's like, time to me is just not all a, it's a, like, it's a, yeah. like, it, it's, it's a, it's, it, I don't know. It's, it's, you make a movie C-Quest, about the loss of C-Quest time. C-Quest DSV was 93. Fuck. Yeah, it was 93 years old. 90, 93, 93. 93. 93. And 93. it was three seasons. Yeah, 93 years old. Last, okay. <laughs> it the was first, C-Quest DSV started in 1993, and it had first, three seasons. Yeah, first two seasons were excellent. Third season was a load of shit. Um, did you know in the third... <laughs> Do you know in the third in the, in the do you know in the third season this is how nuts that show got America was at war with Australia because Australia was trying to take over the world <laughs> Really <funny>. seriously <laughs> that was that there was like there was, Australia had created this huge or well, I think it was called Oceania this huge fucking and it was trying to fucking overthrow the United States yeah. Oh my uh, god, that's funny. And the, and the, and the, and the, le- and the leader was, was the actor Simon Ward, I remember. He was an Englishman anyway. Wasn't even fucking Australian. Um, yeah. I thought, Jesus Christ, really? Australia's trying to take over the world? Fuck me, America. You can oh, sometimes, no. you know, I mean, yeah. Anyway, we're but. Of, we're running out of acceptable bad guys. <laughs> I know, actually, I love it when Australians are the bad guys. Actually, to be honest with you, I, I actually prefer it when I prefer it when Aussies are the bad. It's like I love it in the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Commando. You know, uh, 
You know, it oh was my a, God, and, yeah. and, and there's the bad guy that oh, don't ben, do that again. Was it Bennett? <laughs> you know, and he's wearing the chainmail fucking singlet. Who is a chainmail singlet? Mind you, it was the eighties, wasn't it? Um, anyway, but he's there. He goes, uh, you know, oh, ah, uh, come, you know, <laughs> come on. You know. Okay, we don't need to spend another episode but, talking about um. Oh, I know. Sorry. Here. Sorry no, but, but I love it. <laughs> uh, I just but, like Kindergarten Cop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> fucking great movie oh yeah but i oh actually do you know what i'm wearing right now do you know i am wearing the arnie watch the official arnold Schwarzenegger. oh i was gonna say directional the the what you, you broke up there the, 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 oh what am i wearing <laughs> what am i wearing warren's <laughs> leaning back in the uh the shirt by uh hugo boss jacket by oh, gucci oh, pants no, by right a, over your head uh, no, no, I'm, I'm actually not. I'm in my fucking pajamas. Is the truth, all right? So you know, I'm drinking yeah, red wine too. in my I'm pajamas. Star Wars PJs. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, fucking yeah, quarantine. I mean, quarantine. Really? I mean, quarantine. Yes. Um. Anyway, uh, we were talking. Yeah. We 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 digressed into <clears throat> Arnold Schwarzenegger, <throat> and I am wearing, as I said, the the Arnold Schwarzenegger um Sato watch. So I'll just say, <laughs> get to the chopper. Um, because, oh um, as worn in Commando <laughs> and, uh, and, and of course Predator. So I am wearing that with pride. Um, oh, and, uh, but no, but we were talking paranormal. No, but what we were saying before I took us <laughs> in a totally different fucking direction is, um, do you feel that you have that sort of, I don't know, is the, is the word gift a correct word or like, do you think you but see I things- have it? That you have it, that you see things more than other people see, or do you just oh, think that you've no. been put into situations where shit has happened more than other people? Well, I'm not gonna. I don't know what other people perceive. I know that I am not some kind of a psychic, okay? And I, I, I'm not saying I don't get messages from time to time that I hear in my head, but who knows what the fuck that is. Um, I have had experiences that I can't explain and I've had other people around me sometimes when they've happened. Um, I don't know what other people can or cannot perceive. I don't know what other people accept in their own minds. Um, I think some people are sensitive to things. I think I'm more of an empath than some kind of a medium as an, I, I, I get, if I'm around people, whatever, even if they're quiet, I, I, I feed off their energy. It's the weirdest thing. If somebody's upset, I am upset. Everything about me picks up on that stuff. That kind of thing, People's other people's emotions affect me. Jesus Christ, I probably can't watch a single commercial on TV half the time without crying. Just like I can't. Um, but a lot of people are like that. Um, but no, I'm not. I don't get messages from ghosts and I don't see ghosts. And I know that I've had some experiences. Okay. And here's the thing. I don't want to see anything. Well, I don't want to see anything. I have said before, and I, I've i said in that same house where I heard my name whispered, I've said out loud because I don't know how else to handle the stress of something like that. So sometimes I just, because I also talk out loud to myself when I'm just mad. I will, I, if somebody's done something to upset me and I want to vent, I will verbally do it, but out loud, but in another room, you know? So when this, some stuff's happened, I've said, I don't care if you're here, don't touch me. I don't want to see you. I don't want to hear you. Just leave me alone. You know? So I don't know whether or not that matters. That same house that we were in, somebody pounded on the bathroom door real hard when nobody else was home. You know, that's a scary shit, you know? So, on, so someone pounded not, on not, the front I'm door. Not, You're saying no, the someone bathroom was... door. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Me. Just pounded like blam, 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 blam. Okay. Nobody that... in the house. So how you like shit kind of like that doesn't, but that doesn't mean that I'm some kind of a weird psychic or medium. I'm no, not. But this, this, this um, fucking I think my grandmother was, I think my great, no, I'm just saying, I think my yeah. grandmother was, um, I think my mother would like to be. Uh, where, where was your grandmother? <laughs> you okay, where, where's your grandmother born? It, it, can I ask that, or is that rude? Um, my, no, my grandmother was born in Rowan County, Tennessee, in, oh, which is in, in Tennessee um, still. Her- no, I, like, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, okay, because I, I just I, I remember hearing. Now this is um, 
but is once again I'm an Australian and my understanding of American history is limited. Um, the uh-huh. I, w- I remember when I watched Band of Brothers, whenever it came out fifteen years ago or, or twenty years ago or something, mm-hmm. and and I still remember they uh-huh. were talking about the South of America, and there was one person uh-huh. in there who was meant to be from Louisiana, I think, and he and he was talking uh-huh. about how. In the south of the United States, in the southern states, there is a big thing about Mm -hmm. certain people in towns. Every town would have a person that they would call would be a, like, would have this ability to communicate. Like, and and everyone in the town would go and visit them, even though. Okay, well, I'm going to say that's not in the south. Oh, it's not in the south. Yeah, that's specific. Okay, well. I don't mean it's not in the South. It's not broad across the South. That right. kind of thing was very specific to uh, a place like in Louisiana where, um, like, New Orleans. Right, There's a very yeah. big Creole kind of um, <sighs> voodoo spiritualist uh, mix. Okay, right. so in, yeah, in those okay. areas. So that's that Christian um, voodoo kind of mix so it's, it's, it's that of when things. African- so that makes sense there. So it's when, when African <clears throat> ancestor worship mixes with Christianity and creates its own yes. religion, which is called voodoo. That's what voodoo and, is. Yeah, and voodoo yeah. is not a bad or evil religion. It's just, it's, it's, oh, no, Af- no, no. it's, it's African spirit or ancestor worship mixed with Christianity. Yeah. That's all it fucking is. It's 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 nothing more than that. Yeah. It pisses me off when I hear people say, oh, voodoo is, no, it's fucking not. The well, day of the dead is not it's an evil people thing. It's get fun. Freaked out. It's fucking fun. No, look, you know? Well, I don't know how fun it is. I thought, but I thought it was meant I, to be. Isn't, know, it, isn't, it meant be... To be, isn't it meant to be like a Mardi Gras where everyone dances and, and they and they say oh, thank no, no. you and oh, thank no. you to their ancestors no, 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 and everything no, no. like that? Isn't that the day of the dead? No, that's way... No, Mardi Gras... No. But is it, but the day of the dead is from Mexico. Mardi but, Gras is a whole yeah. other thing. Oh, no, Voodoo no, no. is not no, 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 no. Mardi Gras. No, no, no. What I meant was that Day of the Dead is like Mardi Gras in the sense they have big parades and they dress up like the ancestors okay. and ghosts and spirits. But that's Mexico. I thought it was all that's Central Mexico. America. I didn't think it was just Mexico. I thought it was all through Spanish Latin America. I didn't know it was only Mexico. I thought it was all Latin America. No, but America. it's definitely not in Louisiana or involved in any way regarding voodoo. Right. Or anything like that. Okay. But Mardi voodoo... Gras is a completely different kind of thing. Oh, no, no, no. I know Mardi... No, no, no. no. I didn't... No, no, no. I didn't mean Mardi Gras. No. I meant, I meant they had a parade and festivities like Mardi Gras. I didn't mean Mardi Gras was religious. That's not what I meant. That's... I haven't explained myself. Oh, no, because we were talking about voodoo. So, yeah, no, I just, um, no, Day of the Dead is a completely different kind of thing. Um, It's from, I believe, just from Mexico. Right. Um, I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, please correct me. But um, I do believe it's a Mexican um, holiday in in a sense. So in like in Venezuela, they don't have Day of the Dead? I mean, I thought they did, but I... I, I... I don't think so. But right. I'm not going to say for sure. Okay. Um, well, you I, know more than me. I, as, so, as far as you know. I know, as far as I know, it's Mexico. Okay. But that doesn't mean it hasn't bled over. Right. Because I don't full, know, you know, but you full people on, move around. But full on so. voodoo is mainly in the Caribbean. Is that right? Where you've got... Um, big, Haiti, those are, yeah. yeah. So you've got, you've got the and, majority... And, black, and New Orleans. Yeah, okay. Where well, you've got large black populations who came as slaves... And were introduced then to Christianity, and then they created their own version of religion, which incorporated the two. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. So and then yes. they had um, that also happened on you know in, in areas all across the country um, for a time um, at the plantations and things like that. That happened. Um, it's just prominent um, still in New Orleans, it seems yeah. um, here in the, in the U.S. in that in those surrounding areas. Um, but yeah, I don't know that much about voodoo. Um, yeah, I don't know that much about it. I know the Day of the Dead, which I enjoy celebrating in a way just because I like to dress up with the sugar skulls. Yeah, and that's the... fine. <laughs> I enjoy doing that. Well, well the whole... The, the, well, here, I, mean, I like a... Halloween too. So. But here's the whole thing. American Halloween 
is based from what I can gather loosely, although obviously Halloween is a very American, or I rephrase that, was Canadian celebrated as well, so North American, um, concept which is drawn from Celtic beliefs, mainly from Ireland, is from what I understand. Yes, yeah, um, yeah, the I, and, and, and the idea of the candle in the jack-o'-lantern, is that what you call it, the hollowed-out pumpkin, mm-hmm. comes from the idea yes. that Irish, who I believe, and any Irish listeners tell me if I'm wrong, please, because this is what I've been told, still will, on a certain date, listen, I don't believe it is the Halloween date, it might be today, but I don't know, whatever date it is, will put candles in their windows to guide the ancestors back to the house of their birth. So when they come from the other world, the candle lights the path back to find their family. So... Right, is so that they, what you're saying that the jack o' lantern thing is? I, I believe that's what it's based on. Yes, is my understanding. Because I the I, the idea is the candle is meant to be a beacon, so great grandfather can find his way back and doesn't go to the wrong house. That's meant to be the idea. Hmm. Um, but if um, uh, that was what I hmm. believe the jack o' lantern was based on, but then I've heard other stories that it has something to do with the headless horseman. The story. Oh. Um, that famous American piece of literature. So I, I don't know. Yeah. See what I had. What, see what I had heard. Um, the jack o' lantern thing came from. Um, and it was Irish. It was an Irish legend of um somebody called um, uh, Stingy Stingy Jack. I think it was. Right. Um, he was a drunk. Um, he made a well, it deal was Irish. with the devil. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, yeah. watch it now. <laughs> hey, I'm and, an Australian. Um, we live because right. I, I don't remember the whole story thing. But he had made some kind of a deal with the devil, and then he he was doomed to roam the earth um, with just a hollowed out turnip to light his way. Because the original jack o' lanterns were made of oh, turnips. Yes, I heard that. Um, and they would carry them. Yeah, people would carry them. I think through the towns. I don't know what the whole point of it was, oh, honestly. Okay. But I think. Um, I've seen in the past some pictures of the original styles of the jack o' lantern being turnips, and they are just fucking terrifying. <laughs> just, right. I don't know so, so why maybe, they were doing that, but so maybe that old Irish tradition of the candle in the window is just coincidence. They're not actually linked. It's just coincidence. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe. Um, um, interesting. Yeah, they. I think they were supposed to like represent, like when. When the Christians took over Samhain and they, you know, made it the, their own because I can't remember what pope it was, but when the Christians would go into um, pagan areas, um, one of the popes said, uh, if you go into an area and you see the pagans worshiping a tree, mm. don't cut down the tree, consecrate the tree and make it holy and allow them to continue praying. And they to continue it. to worship. So it, yeah, they. Hence right, Christmas, it, um, Christmas. Christian, yes. And also they took Samhain over and they turned it into like All Hallows Eve and All Saints Day. Yeah. You know, and like All Saints Day. And so it was the day that was supposedly the, the, the jack-o'-lanterns then represented like um, Christian souls that were in purgatory. You know, <laughs> it's like, come it's, on. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's all kind of silly. It's, it's also interesting that that whole idea of trickle treat with Americans um, with witches um, is that um, that had pretty much died out in the Western world, but it hung on in America, uh, which is interesting because witchcraft was, I mean, when when were the Salem witch trials? They were 17... In the 1600s. Or 1600s. In the 1600s. Or late 1600s. Um, yeah. Uh, by the time those happened... In the Western European world, witchcraft had kind of like, you know, no one fucking got executed for witchcraft. It became a very American thing, which is interesting. Um, it, it was almost like we moved to America and we kept the ideals and the ideologies that we took. And then um, Europe moved, progressed further and America stayed where it was. If you, you know, well, and- I mean, well, in the witch trials, 
were, were like 1580 to like 1630, right? I mean, well, there those was, were the, which draw, no, even which in draws, Europe, right? No, they started oh, in like the 1400s in the, oh, in mid, in oh, no, the mid 1400s then. in Europe. Oh, God, but, no. you, go, but you go back before they then, way back. Way back. Um, well, I mean, like but, the hysteria of it, like the, well, yeah, the, yeah, the, but, but, the wild craziness of it. But there wasn't. If you think about it, the, the New World, but the New World wasn't, um, you know, no, they didn't send over, you know, their colonists until the 1600s. So, and they were the Puritans. So these people were religious extremists that were coming over here to but, try to but, um, escape persecution for being but, such fucking extremists, you know. But and then, I know, but see, here's the, that, here's, but here's the thing. In Europe... They weren't here uh, until the but, but this thing, we now know that in Europe, this idea of a, if you want to say, an extermination of women based around witchcraft is absolute crap it, it it didn't happen were there several thousand women in europe executed over a thousand years yes or a thousand or 500 years yes but 99.99999 percent of women accused of witchcraft were found innocent and let free um were they treated badly brutalized you know all that sort of stuff yes and i'm not trying to justify any of that that's horrible but actually murdered, executed? No. It was very, very, um, very rare Warren, in Europe. But um, in America... I don't wanna, I, no, no, no. Listen, though, I don't want to step on that. But between right. the and I'm looking this up right now because I was curious. Between mm-hmm. the years of 1500 and 1660 in Europe, yep, yep. up to 80,000 suspected yeah, witches were put that, to death. Okay, where's that information 80, coming 000. from? 80,000. Is that... Okay, because history dot com. Right, historians today believe those numbers are ludicrously wrong. Like it's made up. According it's made up to whom? Because okay, the reason is the records were kept by the church, and it is believed that the church artificially inflated the numbers. So, in other words, if so. If one I think person... that's a convenient way to excuse an atrocity. <laughs> to well, say that, okay, honestly, but, okay. I don't. If... Why would why would they inflate the numbers? What would be the point of that? Because he kept the. What pope would be the What would be the? Because the the thing is the what? church. Well, the church. You'd have to remember there was only one church at this point, right? I understand that. So, yeah. um, the the thing is that it it kept everybody happy. So, in other words, oh, we, we, uh, all of these witches have been killed. Yeah, they weren't really killed because the whole you, point is that... Do you think they were reading it in the newspaper? Like, how, how would that number get around in medieval Europe at that time? Like, it didn't I, get I don't around. understand how you think that... It, it didn't get around because yeah. there was no news. It didn't happen. You got told what someone That's what wanted I'm saying. you to So, do. whose numbers were they inflating? Uh, the church itself. That's what I don't understand what okay. you're saying. Okay, well, the church itself is an organization. It has to work on the premise that it's actually doing what it's meant Are to do. Are you insinuating the church, you're saying the church didn't put people to death for these things? Oh, no, I mean, because course, I think we they know did. they did. No, 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 of course they, they did. Had, the entire no, time they've been around, all they do they, is a of, fucking no, atrocity. No, 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 no. Oh, don't, don't, please, you know how I feel about the church. You know very well that I believe that they've committed huge atrocities throughout history. What I am trying mm-hmm. to say is that I, my understanding of what I've read, as in serious history uh, writings uh, uh, about the witch trials in Europe, I'm not talking about the witch trials in the United States or in the Americas. No, I was talking about Europe. Okay, in, in Europe, yeah, is it, that yeah. did thousands of people were thousands of people put to death? Absolutely. But were the numbers inflated astronomically to make it look like witchcraft was being exterminated by the church throughout Europe and the population was being told that? That is something that I'm not saying is right or is wrong, but many many historians, huge amount of historians now believe is possibly what really Mm. happened and that those numbers are not accurate. Now, now, in saying that, well, okay, but but see, here's but see, here's the thing that I think that is. Then I think that that, in my mind, when I mm. hear that, it comes to my thought that that yet again is the church going out and trying to nice up 
the shit that they've done in the past. Ah, that, that, that is may a, not, not be the case. Yeah, that that is, they're okay. trying to make it look all nice, nice. Okay. No, we didn't really do this. Look, we're saying, oh, those numbers were inflated. We didn't really kill all these people. Yeah. And, and and I think and, th- that's in my mind, yeah. that's way more likely. Well, I no, I I, I, <laughs> no, just, I I fully hear that, and it's like these people who were Holocaust deniers who say, oh, it wasn't 6 million Jews, it was only about 200,000, and they died of starvation and disease and blah, 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 blah. No, you're lying through your teeth, okay? We have the history. Yeah. What I'm, su- yeah, I'm, okay. I'm skeptical right. of that so, kind of question. So what I'm, what I'm saying, though, is with the, the witch deaths in Europe is that were thousands of people murdered? Yes, absolutely. Was the number as high? It's, it's a little bit like Tiananmen Square, okay? Was that a horrendous act by the Chinese government to murder its own population? Yes. Were the numbers as high as was originally claimed in the late 80s? No. There were not, you know, like fucking 10,000 people killed at Tiananmen Square, right? Those The numbers are wrong. Mm-hmm. Um but did a horrific event happen? Yes. There right. is some, and, and so um, I'm not saying it's it's right or wrong, and I, I don't necessarily have a dog in the fight. You know, like I, I I'm not so I, I'm not here to defend witchcraft or to be anti witchcraft or pro the Catholic Church or anti the Catholic Church. Um, <laughs> but uh, but from what I've read, and we live in a world of hey, it's fake news, baby. Right, you know, um, I'm just I, I'm just not a hundred percent convinced at this stage that the numbers of the witchcraft murders in Europe was as high as has been historically reported. In the same sense that we know that, um, for instance, at the Battle of Thermopylae, all right. The Spartans, who sent supposedly 300, or it wasn't actually 300, but who sent that force to defend the pass against the Persian army, they did not face 3 million warriors. Okay? No army was that big. The Persian army was probably the largest army in the world at that time, but 3 million? I'm sorry, these numbers are ludicrous. All right? History yeah, I don't some, think that's this. I don't right. think that's the same kind of comparison. No, no, no but what I are just, these? I, I don't, I, sometimes gives us artificial numbers to make something sound better than it really is. In other words, well, the that's, Greeks. Well, that's, the, so the Greeks said that three. Well, that's what I'm saying is what million. they're doing when they're saying it wasn't that much. That's right, what, okay, that's, like, okay, that's all okay. I'm saying. Let's move on, okay? All right, let's move on. Sorry. All right, let's move, let's on, move on because on. otherwise okay. we get nowhere. Oh, so. Yeah, we, I want to take a break for a minute. Let's do that. That's okay. That's okay. Because um, I have to. I have to. I have to watch the restroom. <laughs> I have to use the restroom. I do too. So, no, I do, do too. It. But I've also pissed yeah, Irish so, off. So I've also on. pissed her off. So yeah, I'm not. Don't you don't get to do that. You don't. That'll piss me off. Oh, sorry. Okay. I was just, I was just that kind of shit pisses me off. I was just mad. <laughs> It's just my right. No, I'm hey, just saying we've been hey. going on that for a while. I oh, think no, no, we, we should just move on. I oh, know, but we. Hey, but all I will say yeah. is that we're all allowed different opinions as long as the opinions aren't. Let's put people in ovens. It's okay to have different opinions. Do you know what I mean? In other words, we're all allowed to agree to disagree. There are some points we can't disagree on, but apart from that, let's have a debate. It's fun. Yeah, I'm not looking to debate. No. I just want to talk. But yeah, let's Sorry. take a break real quick. Sorry. <laughs> okay? Let's take oh, a break. Fuck I gotta me. go. I gotta I've go. been locked down too much. All right, we'll be right back. And we are back. Let's change the subject. Let's go something lighter. Oh, <laughs> fuck. I, I to- Everything's I to- fine. I told you I've got a lot of frustration <laughs> built up at the moment. I just tapped my desk and the whole desk went, Shrr! the whole fucking thing just rattled. <sighs> three months in. Three it was months the ghost, in- Warren. Oh, yeah, it was the ghost. It's, it's either the ghost or it's three months in quarantine losing my mind and becoming very fucking argumentative. <laughs> anyway, so a story to tell you. I was, I was, I was cleaning out. I've been taking time in this lockdown quarantine to start going through the various yes. rooms in the house and sorting crap out, okay? 
And apart from my daughter's crap, of which there's so much of, I'm just tempted to throw it out and not tell her. But anyway, that's a, you know. Oh, don't do oh, that. If she hasn't oh. leave, if she, Make her come get it at least. Oh, she's been promising to come and get it for put fucking it, three years. So, I mean, you then know. Put anyway. it in a box and send it in the post. A box? Try 50 <laughs> fucking boxes. Anyway. Uh, anyway. anyway. So. Um, <laughs> I need a fucking second mortgage just to pay for the postage. But, um, oh, God. The, <laughs> no, but no, but anyway, I was going through all the cupboards and everything like that. And I went through and I found all these boxes called trains. And I thought, really? I like, you know how I love my model trains. I've got a model trail, you know, train yes. set and layout and everything. Yeah. And I run my trains. It's been one of my saving fucking graces through this lockdown is playing with my model trains. And, yeah, I know, I'm such a kid, sue me. But anyway. Um, like, and, Adams, um, that's what it reminds me oh, of. Oh, yeah, yes. And, uh, anyway, so I open, <laughs> I, open, I open up these four bead boxes. And I'm going through it, and there's all this Canadian railway stuff, right? Engines, carriages, right? All this stuff. And I go through it, and I sort it all out. There's 13 engines, and... Um, Oh, I don't know, fucking me, a hundred carriages, right? Um, and it, it's 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 and and I, I suddenly realised I thought I had sold all of this stuff, and clearly I hadn't. I'd put it aside to sell, and then never sold it because so I I run a European like German Swiss railway, okay? Um, but uh-huh. I used to love uh, North American railways because i won't bore people with why i just think american railways are cool and um and i had all of all of this stuff and i thought i'd sold it and clearly i hadn't and suddenly facing me was f- at, at least i don't know five six thousand dollars worth of railway equipment sitting in wow. front of me and and i thought what do i do with it do i sell it Who's going to buy it? We're in the middle of a pandemic fucking quarantine, right? Who's going to buy it? Right. And then I thought, do I just keep it? I don't know. Like, what do you do? Like, have you ever found, have you ever been searching through an attic or a a basement or cupboards or gone into, um, you know, I've heard stories about people going through houses um, you know, when their grandparents have died and they've been searching through stuff and they've found stuff that they've just gone, holy crap. Like, have you ever had an experience where you've just found something that blew your mind? You didn't know was... Like, like for me, five, six thousand dollars worth of, of stuff just found, didn't know I right. had. Right? And have you ever had experiences like that? You know, I... Ha- I haven't, and here's why. Because growing up, we moved all the time. And there was never a time when we put things away in an attic that we would forget about. Um, We moved constantly. Because when my dad, you know, was in the military, oh my God, which I have a different story to tell you about that, because I know I had mentioned some stuff. But um, I found out some more info, which was actually quite interesting. But... um, we moved so much after he got out of the military, he was a musician. And so we would move from house to house, even in the same cities. And I never got an opportunity to do two things. One settle in and like hide things in an attic or do things like right. have that kind of uh, generational, like go up there and find surprises kind of thing. And um, I also was never able to make like really deep, deep friendships that lasted from the time I was a kid. I have a few um, people I know from high school still that I care about a lot. But um, other than that, people from before that, I don't have any relationships with anybody from before high school because we just didn't live in a place where I was able to make long-term friendships. So, but um, yeah, no, I haven't done that. <laughs> so. it's, 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 it's interesting. I um, Do you know, what, one of my friends... Um, a guy that I went to school with, grew up with, okay? And um, uh-huh. we we used to, when we were very young, when we were kids, mm-hmm. we used to play toy soldiers, you know, with 
the, the soldiers and the tanks and the aeroplanes, and we go broom, yeah. broom, 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 and we would play. And but and but we do it seriously. We actually you know threw dice and we had rules and we would play war games, right? But we right. built our own armies and we created our own empires based on the real world. He was the United States of America and I was the British Commonwealth, right? And right. and we would actually fight for countries at, in, in real, like, with you no know, toy soldiers in the living room, right? You know, it's like, well, this, is the uh-huh. battle, this is the battle for Romania, you know, as he and I would fight for control of the world, you know, with our armies and stuff like that. We're fucking 10 years old, you know, right? Okay. However, but that's kind of not that unusual, not for a 10-year-old anyway. But where it gets really, really fucking fascinating is that a a few years ago, his parents, um, well, uh, the last of his parents died. And they cleared out the, um, um, the house. They were going through the house. Apart from finding fucking stats of cash, which had been hidden away, which is interesting, depression children, um, what, what he um, they also found in the ceiling, he found a little tin. And he opened up the tin and inside was a note. And it was a note between him and I with his and my signature on it. And it was a <laughs> note about how our game... We signed a space treaty that we wouldn't take the war to space. <laughs> and we both signed it. He signed it as That's cute. the President Aww. of the United States. And I signed it as the Prime Minister of the British Commonwealth. And we signed it, That's put it in funny. a tin. And it had sat there, right? For, uh, uh, you know. Time capsule. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and it was like, wow. I mean... That was just, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, It's it's amazing what people, you know, can find. Um, And I I just thought that was really interesting, you know, really, really interesting what people find in houses. That's kind of neat. I mean, one of the more, I I think it's funny, but I don't know, was was a little bit like I heard the story of um, uh, acquaintances who were cleaning out um, their father's. the mother had passed on and the father he had an apartment and then he had passed on and um and they were cleaning it out and there were videos in the video or not videos you know dvds right in the um blu-rays well whatever they might have been it might even be videos i don't even know i can't even remember how old this story is okay so but they were there and, and and in them there was like a case and it said you know disney on ice and the other one sort of said, you know, I don't know, the wonderful adventures of Tarzan and the other one. But when you opened them up, it was black men, white women. Or it was it was Asian Oh, they were or, hiding or, or it was porn. Asian triple X number twenty two. Like it was all fucking <laughs> porn. It was all hardcore <laughs> porn. But it was all put into the bookshelf. <laughs> behind these things like oh Disney God. and and or you know it's like the Wizard of Oz and you open up the Wizard of Oz oh my and it was literally like you know you know black men dominate white women it was like yeah yes you said that um, yes oh yeah I know but it was it was like but, no, but I'm, look I can't remember what the fucking titles were I'm just trying I'm making them up okay but it's okay it's okay but, you don't have to remember <laughs> But but the thing was, I, I thought, fuck <laughs> me, that is funny. That is really funny. You've got. I told you, know, you that. Well, yeah. No, there's some stuff you find, man, when old people pass on. I told you the story about the um, the the old lady that gave my mother and father the cloisonne box and the jade box. I tell you that. Oh, well, she didn't give it to them. Is that the one where she it was changed, dead? It, it changed color. Was that the one you were talking about? Was it, was... No, that's the one. Okay, no, so. My mother, when they moved to Minneapolis and they were in their very early 20s, I guess there was an estate sale, okay? So they went to this place and it was somebody that they knew, um, like their grandmother or something. So they had gone with them at like early to this kind of estate sale and they were going to buy something. Well, they'd gone into the bedroom and this this woman who was like 98 when she passed away, they went into her room and literally on the ceiling above her bed was a poster of Rudolph Valentino. <laughs> 
of oh, ceiling, God. okay? And yeah. in the drawer and in the drawer next to her bed, it was filled with all kinds of sex toys. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, and like, I remember yeah, my like, mother bought two things from the from the estate sale, which she still has a beautiful cloisonne box and a and a jade box, which were gorgeous. And they were probably from the 1800s and just yeah. beautiful. But the story that goes with them is that that she they found them in this place with this woman with this poster of Rudolph Valentino over her bed and a, and a drawer full of sex toys. <laughs> when she died, and she's like 98. So I thought I love it. that was a brilliant story, actually. So for the rest of my life, and when she passes on, those will come to me, and I will be able to still remember the story. <laughs> and so. Well, I, I think I, that's great. I'll be able to pass I, that down I, too. What, what, is, what is that movie with um, Steve Martin and a few, a, a number of other famous actors um, and mattresses? Uh, although it's just, everyone's just talking that to now. Um, um, I'm sorry. And um, uh, where it's all about families, bringing up families. There, there are three different families within the one family. Um and um a parenthood parenthood that's it and there is a scene where they're all there for yeah. a family gathering and there is a power cut the power goes out and someone goes it's okay it's okay and they're in the the house of the sister who is single she's a single mum with a with a son um and um and 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 and, and someone says this uh, 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 don't worry about the power I'll, I'll get a torch oh here we go i found one and you hear to and all you hear is <laughs> Whoops! Uh, I know. Um, uh, yeah, I love Steve Martin. Oh my can gosh, I, actually, can, I tell, can I tell you? Sorry, do you know I saw? Actually, it wasn't that film. It was was the movie? Look who's talking. Um. With Bruce, <laughs> you know when Bruce Willis plays the baby. Yes, you know, Bruce Willis and Kirstie uh, Alley. Uh, Kirstie Alley, yeah. Being, okay. Oh yes, I know. But plays the mother, you know, and she decides to go as the single mother and raise the yes. child. And, all. and uh, yes. you know, I saw that, and he here's this idea of synchronicity or something. I don't know, but I saw that the night before I found out I was going to be a father. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last image in my mind before I was told you're going to be a dad. <sighs> I, don't, I don't know. You know I what's just... funny, Warren? Now that you say that, though, I actually have a connection to that movie and being a mom. Because, and it's funny that you say that because I I don't know what it was about that stupid movie. There's one line that is said in that movie. And I, for some reason, took it and used this this name, this nickname, this little cutesy name on my son when he was born. And, okay, there's a moment where Kirstie Alley, who, again, is a horrible human being, but <laughs> in this moment when she looks down at her son in the movie, Mikey, and says, hey, little face, right? She calls yeah. him little face. A lot of times I've seen reason, this, but yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, she does, yeah. okay? I don't know. remember anything else really about the movie, mm. okay? I remember her saying that, and I remember when Noah was born, calling him that, and from the um. time he was, like, brought home. And and I would say, I would joke when I would say that that was, and I, I don't mean to, I'm not trying to be racially insensitive, okay? I don't, yeah, maybe it, this sounds bad now that I'm saying it. But I, I would say it was his Native American name, which was Little Face. <laughs> so oh, I, I, just, oh, I, I get I just, what you I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. And I don't mean yeah. it to be, yeah, I don't mean it to be in any way racially That's, insensitive. I, I literally I just meant it as a way because they would use descriptive names to, yeah. to just, you know, as, and would That's... make them names. And I just thought, to me, that was just his... That was his little Native American name, which was just little face because he had a little face. And I I don't know. And I hope nobody takes offense at that because it was honestly for me just. I hope. I hope they don't. I I hope not. No, I I don't think. Because now that I'm saying it, I was like, maybe that's insensitive. I I, I, I hope it wasn't. But I I get. I get. Don't worry. I get where you're going. It's like there have been lots of times where I thought I've said or done something, and I've come away going, 
was that racially offensive or was that sexually I as in, yeah, like like I, offensive or was, because if was it was I, I apologize and i didn't uh, yeah that and, way. And, and now i, I just can't. thought it was um, a nickname for him that i think it was a term of endearment you know for me to him so oh, but, but, and i but, and i got it from that movie though that's what was weird that's like i realized that's where it came from when my daughter but was i don't born, know what made me when my it. daughter when my <laughs> daughter was born i called her fog called Nathorn. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> well, she had okay. This, this sounds really, really weird, but for a baby, she had very big feet. She had really quite large feet, oh and my God. she had this obsession <laughs> that she would. Uh, now, like all kids, they all go into proportion after a year or so. But you know what it's like for that first year; they can be a bit out of proportion for that first year. Parents know what I'm. You know what I'm talking about, all right? And. And, um, and anyway, that happened to me when I was thirteen. I, 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 no, I wasn't talking about that precisely. But anyway, um, and, no, no, um, I just meant I just no. Well, you know, you know, some you know, like some, like some kids, you like know, it's like their, their feet are a bit big, their hands are a bit, their heads are a bit big. But after about a year, yeah, it all, it all yeah. goes back into fucking you know sink. And um, <laughs> I always thought her feet were a bit big. And she had this obsession when she was this newborn. I'm talking about in the hospital, just for, like for the first week, where she would not allow the blanket to cover her feet. Like she would kick her feet out all the time, right? And of course, well, it's a, yeah. a, a one day, two year old. Yeah, but a one or two, you've got to keep her warm because they've gone from 37 degrees to 21 degrees. So they're not used to it. You've got to fucking keep them warm. And um and, yeah. and she would kick it off. So in my mind, I, I still remember when I was sitting there in the hospital, I still remember the grandparents were around and stuff. And I sort of said, I don't I, I'm sorry, but she's fault or late on. Right? And they all looked at me like I was the fucking <laughs> devil. It's like, How dare you call out her And I was like, I'm really having fun. I'm not I'm not suggesting we call her foggy or anything. You know, that wasn't actually my <laughs> yeah, idea. Hey, that might be cute. Well, yes, he probably would have. Little nickname. I know. Um, But, um, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm sorry. I'll just shut up now. All right. Sorry. You know, it's like, you know. And then then my. And then the the grandparents will look at each other and go, Oh, how are you? We have a wonderful granddaughter. And I'm just sitting there going, Oh, my goodness. I'm only the dad. I'll just shut up. Is that all right? You know? Um, But it's. um, Yeah, yeah. Oh, dearie me. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. We were very lucky, too. We, we we had a private hospital, actually, when Bridget was born. So we had a private room. So that was really fucking... Um, and it was pure luck. It was about fucking luck of my mother, who had found a loophole in the insurance laws. We were actually to go... We were actually able to... Um, privately ensure the birth after the pregnancy had been discovered which was really fucking weird okay. and, we, and we didn't have to go through the government system even though the government system would be fine the only difference was that instead of having a, a room of one or two mums or sharing the room um she got a private room which was kind of really weird um it was interesting too because i, I I don't know what it was like with you guys, but I would turn up and my dinner would be waiting. Like I'd come from work, go to the hospital and I'd go to the room and my dinner was there. Like my dinner was part of the deal. Hmm. Well, what happened to me is that my water broke at midnight. My son was born at 4.07 a.m. And I was sent home the next day at two in the afternoon. What? We were in there for a week. Yeah. The oh, next God, day. No. Get the fuck out. The Have next a baby day. get out. Oh, fuck no. We were yeah, in there. Well, we it had, wasn't a week. We it was had, a good five days. A... It was five days. Oh, God. No. No. No, literally. Okay. First of all, I can't ask for a, a better delivery than that because, honestly, my water broke at midnight. That's when I went into labor. And he was born at 4.07 a.m. It was very quick. I have to agree that it was great in that regard. Um other than that, though, um, if you're not having any issues, they send you home the next day now. there's Here in the U.S. with our insurance system, um, yeah, you don't get a choice. 
You go. Get out. So, yeah. The insurance mm. company isn't going to pay for you to laze about in the hospital. Now, they did mm. give us a meal. We were able to – it was technically a dinner, but we had it right before we left, um, which was – I was One technically meal discharged at two, but we got the wow. dinner. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, they, uh, like a nice meal. Like they gave us a special meal. It wasn't oh, that I oh, didn't we, get breakfast. I okay, did. We, but we they saw... gave us like steak and something else. And, you know, it was stupid. It was, it, you know, in the hospital room. Just If you're going to just send me home, just send me home. I'll eat steak at home. You know, I'm sure they're going <laughs> to yeah. put it on my bill. You know, that was, you know, but I mean, yeah, here, they're absolutely not. Now, when I was born, my mother um, was just 18 and um, they put her, because it was a long time ago, um, in a twilight sleep where she was awake but didn't remember anything. And when she was, after I was born, they took me away and she, when she woke up from this stupor that she was in, didn't remember that I had really been born and thought I was dead and why won't you show me my baby? And she like had this whole freak out. <laughs> but she was an 18 year old girl and at the time, husbands weren't allowed in the room um, and they put her in a twilight sleep so they basically drugged her and just yanked me out of her. So, <laughs> like, times have changed. <laughs> well, I, I just thought, well, we... <laughs> We we went to the Lilydale Bush Nursing Hospital. Um, sounds like it's something in the middle of the outback, but it was actually just on the outer outer skirts of it. <laughs> and um, and, and yeah. I still remember. Um, um, well, I won't mention names, um, but went into labour yeah. at uh, midnight. I didn't even realise I was asleep, and she just pounded it out up and down the hallway. Didn't even wake me up. Right, <laughs> which, which I, 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 women I, just deal with shit. That's well, uh, to be honest with you, that's probably the case. It's probably like I was just going to be more fucking trouble than I was worth. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, anyway, and then I got woken up, and it was a bit, I, <laughs> I, it's time we're going, and and it was sort of like what. What the fuck? And then I suddenly was going to be like, hang what? on, is, is the bag, have we got the bag? Is the bag pet? Where's the fucking bag? Where's the bag? Oh, it's under the, okay, right. And it, it really was like panic mode, you know. No, it, it wasn't that bad. It was yeah. pretty, it was actually pretty well organized. It was like, grab the bag. Because you mean, weren't I, in labor. Well, no, no. I, I love, I, I, love, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I know, that's true. I love to tell the story about, you know, how, how it was all like, oh, dad's in panic. Dad, go and find the bag. But it actually, it actually, truthfully, wasn't really like that. It was actually pretty fucking organised. It was a bit like, all right, grab the bag in the car, or right, off we go. I can still remember, and and I, she actually got really pissed off to me because I said, nah, I don't put the towel on the seat because I said you're not breaking your fucking water because cars didn't have leather seats in those days, like they're all cloth. So you're not breaking your fucking water. All over our car's seat. I'm not spending two grand Warren. to fix the fucking car. Warren. You know? Oh I my know. god. So I'm sorry, but you know. Anyway. <laughs> and you know what? A towel would have done fuck all anyway, was the truth, right? Break your water. Exactly. Uh, but but the thing Come was Come on, man. I don't know. Pick I was, your I, battles. I, I thought I was doing the right thing anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, and that, so we uh, but I still remember we drive out, we get Every traffic light, I go there and I have a look. Is there a camera? Is there a camera? Can I see a camera? No, there's no camera. Woohoo! Break the red light. Go through. <laughs> right? Get to this traffic light. Is, look, and I'm looking around. But you can see the cameras. They're very obvious, right? On all the... Because there's cameras everywhere right. in Australia, right? On You know, in the road. Looking around. No, right. no camera. No camera. All right. Woohoo! And go through. And, and in the end, I think I just got to the stage where I wasn't even looking anymore. I was just going, oh, fuck it. We'll deal with it later on. And, um, and, and got through. And, um, and then I still remember parking in the, um, uh, the ambulance bay at about five in the morning. Right. And then we, and, and then we, and then we went in and, um, and we couldn't find anybody. There was nobody on duty. There was nobody. We could not find <laughs> anybody. We went up and down the hallways. And, and, and in the end, she sat down. And I said, I will find someone. And then she's found someone in the end. They just came to her. And I'm wandering around the fucking hospital. You know, I didn't even know where. I was in and she was already being taken away. Uh, you had no yeah, idea. Yeah, I know. And, um, <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, dearie me. Yeah, fun times. <laughs> yeah, it's all it's all an experience. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely is the case. Oh, it is. It is. All, you know, it, it, it's all it, it's all crazy and fun, but you know, hey, hey you know, you, you look what comes out of it, you know, and it's like, um, wow, you know, it's uh, it, it it is. Oh, I think we're having a little bit of an issue here, so we might just take a quick. Oh no, are we okay? Are you there? Uh, can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. People just heard up. Uh, Did we have a, a glitch? Bit. Yeah, we just had a glitch there for a moment, but we're all good now. So, I don't know what ha- where'd we where'd we end off then. Who knows? No, it's all right. Oh, who cares? It doesn't okay. matter. I, I think we're done with that anyway. So, so no, that's all right. But a- have you got anything amazing from the week that you wanted to bring up for? Um... Amazing from the week? No, I'm. It's it. America's a shithole right now and we need to do something about it. So, um, and I'm going to go on vacation to Tennessee, um, in a couple of weeks, like in 10 days. So it's not a couple of weeks, right. like in 10 okay. days. So, yeah. So, um, that'll be fun. Is that <laughs> sarcastic or is that like, well, I mean, in some regards, I do love Tennessee. I love the, um, the nature and the beauty yeah. of it all. And, um, other than that, what I would really like to be able to do is to take a vacation that wasn't um, filled with obligations to other people. I would like to take a vacation and actually get to take a vacation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Which, you I know, but question? I can't. Why don't yeah. you? No, why don't um, you? Because I can't right now. My right. only vacation time is going to be doing this, and it's an obligation, right. not a vacation. No, I, I can't. No, I'm using my vacation time to do it. See what I'm saying? I do. No, no, no I do. <laughs> yeah. no, I, do. I, just, I was just curious. So, um, yeah, because I can't. Yeah. Oh, no, don't worry. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I hear you. I'll be able I, to take I, a vacation when I'm dead. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> so when I'm dead, I'll be able to relax. Well, then, but... <laughs> You know, other than that, been, I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. So, um, other than that, there's a lot of stuff going on. The project we're working on, it's in the hands of some, like, stuff's going on. Um, so, that, um, in, in that regard, everything is going great. And um, I'm I'm really excited about where, where we're going with this project. And um, other than that, I'm just, you know, trying to get through. So other that's, nothing that's exciting. Good. No, but it's it, it, it's good to know that on a business perspective, you're doing all right. You know, yeah. Even, I am. even though it's just even life. though the country might be, you know, but you're doing well, okay. If we have and a that's civil war. No one cares about TV. So um, <laughs> that's what did, did you re- did you really think that you could ever get to that stage again? Dude, oh. we just had we just they just arrested. Um, 13 people, I think, 13 yeah. men in a plot to kidnap one of our governors but and it's... hold her for trial, you know, for her crimes. It's like these people are crazy. And, and but... Donald Trump is, is I realize this, all of but of these, so... but of these militias with their, they're not militias. Uh... They're domestic terrorist cells. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. They're not okay. militias. Those are state okay. regulated. And that's not what these people are. Okay. Sorry. These white supremacist terrorists the Trump oh, they're not gives... all white supremacists, though, either. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt oh. you, but they're not. Oh, they're 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 Western misogynists. Okay, these <laughs> can we just say these Trump supporting terrorists? Is Thank that right? You. Trump's yes. terrorists. Here's a new one. Trump's terrorists. So, Trump's terrorists. Are Trump's terrorists seriously going to be able to put up much of a fight against the 75th Ranger Regiment? the 82nd Airborne Division, the 1st Armoured Division, are they seriously a threat? I mean, apart from putting bombs in hotels and, and shit like that, are they honestly... They're not a civil war threat, are well, they? I mean, yeah, see, the, the your thing, military Warren. will have them for breakfast. Warren, do you know what I mean? Thing. So Listen. No, listen, because this is important. Our election is at the beginning of November. Yeah. If Trump loses... He is yeah. still in office until January 20th, okay? Yeah. There is a okay. lot of time in between when the election happens for a bunch of shit to go down. When Trump is elected, still like when he's still in office, not when he's elected, but even after he's yeah. a lame duck, 
Yeah. If he's still in office, the military is not going to go in and do anything against him or the supporters of his if they're not if he doesn't call them in and they can he can't. He can't call the military in because it's illegal for the military to go into action against citizens of America. It's illegal. Right. Okay. And he's not going to do it. He's and he's yeah. not going to do it because they're people that support him. But okay. How... So but, but okay. listen, but yeah. the, the the military can't do anything in that regard. Okay? If okay. that happens. Okay. The only thing that can happen is the governors can call in the national guard in their area. Yeah. Okay? But they still can't do anything violently against American citizens. So the problem is these fucked up people who support Trump have the majority of the weapons in our country. Okay. Some of these people have hundreds and hundreds of assault rifles and shit in their house. Okay. The majority of people other than them in like, it's like 2% of the people in America own 90% of the guns. Okay. Yeah, and those are the yeah. people that are the problem. Who's going to fucking stop them when they start going out and doing these terrorist things? Because they're already killing people. We but have already had them going out and shooting people. But doesn't, and, doesn't and, all your terrorist laws go into activation instantly as soon as they do that? Do, isn't the, doesn't the what FBI and, and, and all the they SWAT even... teams and everything come into activation? It's like 9-11. If these people start doing stuff, no. don't no. these organizations immediately no. go into... That's the federal and, government you're talking about, and they're under the direct direction of the president. Okay, so here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Nobody's doing anything to stop the shit that's happening now. Okay, our FBI and stuff, yeah, they've arrested some people and everything. But see, the problem is once this shit starts happening, who is going to step up and do anything? Okay, well, here's, here's a question for you. Okay. Our military this, can't. That's okay, the problem. Well, okay. Well, here's a very serious. This is a very serious question for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then we'll we'll finish the show on a up note. I promise. Oh but yeah, right. Is, okay. No, but this is this is something that I'm actually quite interested to learn the answer to. All right. And that is in Australia, you have the the military is divided between the regular forces and let's just call it the reserve forces. There's also mm-hmm. the standby forces. They're the men and women who have served in the past that could be called back, but that they don't do any military training. Do you know what I mean? They're just, they're there, right? So you've got the reserve. There. Now, if the regulars can't be utilized because they're federal, but your reserve, the way America works, your reserve are run by the states, not by the, the federal, okay? Uh-huh. Do you have special forces, elite forces in your reserves. So in other words, California can say, fuck you, we're sending out the Green Berets. Deal with that. Because no. we've got them in the reserves. Or are they only no. in the regulars? Like yeah, Because no, in, in, not... a, in other countries, France, Britain, Germany, Australia, you still have special forces within the reserve of the military. Yeah, is but that it not doesn't... the case in America? This is my no, question. Not at, no, not in our, our National Guard and our reserves. Um, no, not in that regard. Right, They're not okay. under the command of the governors in these states. And even if they were, they literally are not permitted, based on our laws, to turn their weapons um, or provide any kind of force against um, American citizens. Now, I know it's happened in the past. Right. We've had Kent State but and other things. They did that. They, I thought they did that. I they thought... did. They have. Um, but they're not, that's legally not permitted. Right. So if they are, if they do that at that point, they're siding with Trump, basically, honestly, because, okay, so, our problem is, okay, see, we have these guys who come in and they, they call themselves militia people, but as I've said, that's not what they they're are. Terrorists. They're, they're terrorists. They're domestic yeah. terrorist cells. Yeah, okay, yeah. They're losers and fucking flaccid little dicked men. No, I know. They're, they're, like, no, I'm just saying, they just feel like dicks. they have to come out there and be no, tough. They're small, so, they're small dick but what terrorists. We have, they're terrorists with but no but, dicks. Yeah, but what we oh. have, the problem is we have our police forces and sheriff's departments and things like that siding with these people. Okay, so we oh, have some... No, I'm sorry. 
are you seriously saying just i don't know i don't know any better i'm an australian i'm not an american all right mm-hmm. that at the moment we have american police departments but you have your your like germany like you have a fucking police department for every fucking city aren't you it's like every oh yeah okay, two right. a county yeah, okay. and a city right, and okay. a state yeah. and a... yeah okay yeah um now um so you're saying that these forces because they're so regionalized there's so many of them like you must have what a thousand different police forces or something mm-hmm. like that well uh, there's one in every little town right okay that way more than that a, a number of them are siding with the terrorists okay see what's happening is that when there's been the protests and stuff going on the militia groups as they like to call themselves coming into areas where they're not even from yeah um carrying their weapons and the cops are handing them water and talking to them mm. and giving them heads up when they're going to be closing up the streets we've got them on video doing this shit tons and tons of shit all over the place and then just today somebody interviewed a a sheriff in Michigan where the governor was going to be they, they kidnapped tried to kidnap by these guys. Yeah. Okay, they they hadn't tried yet. They were planning it. They were also planning to potentially blow up a bridge to get the police distracted so that they could go over and kidnap her without being bothered mm. and maybe also attacking some cops. But there's a sitting fucking sheriff in that in that state that was interviewed that was trying to say that they were just trying to maybe um, you know, give a citizen's arrest, which is legally allowed to give a felony arrest if they thought that she was doing something wrong. So he is literally on camera supporting what these people are doing. The cops are regularly in these areas where the protests and things are going on are regularly videoed fraternizing with these guys, saying, we appreciate what you're doing here, things like that. How the Mm. fuck is anybody in this country supposed to trust our law enforcement when they are siding with the people who, when this all goes down, may very well be trying to kill all of us in the streets? So how are we how are we supposed to trust that? Because we can't. We can't trust it right now. Immigrate, so that's what's fucking terrifying. Immigrate to Australia. Yeah, we um, I can't even get out of this country at this point. We talked about it. I know, I know, I'm I know. I know. I, I'm just trying to I don't know, maybe be a little bit lighthearted on something that's very, very serious in it's America. It's horrifying. I'm gonna just um, say to you, that's why I don't want to necessarily talk about it a lot right now because no, I, I swear to God I'm freaked out out right now no i i, I, I understand I, I look i i i i i worked okay i'll can i just say this um if it's all right yeah i worked with a guy who lived through the well let's just call it the croatian civil war the okay. bosnian croatian war um the sorry the bosnian civil war the serb croatian war um he wasn't part of the chechen war that's a Oh, sorry, that's Russian. I mean, I don't. The, but the the third one that came after it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'm sorry if I can't remember every fucking name. I'm it not, doesn't matter. Just been, go tell right. the story. It's and and anyway, and and um, but he talks about how living through when a nation, which was a nation, fell apart and then fell into disarray, and then people started shooting each other, and right. then suddenly military units were being called up and then you know and then people were being asked to decide who they sided with and then suddenly he was being conscripted into a military to fight a war that he didn't give a shit about he couldn't care whether he was fucking croatian serbian yugoslavian or bosnian he didn't care he just wanted to live a fucking life right and in the end he, he fought in a fucking civil war he didn't even believe in um, because people have to do what they have to do, you know. I just sometimes yeah. people serve for survival, and well, that's exactly um, right, you know. And um, that scares me a little bit because the Yugosla- Yugoslavia in the nineteen when was it nineteen nineties? Um, that <clears throat> to me, I I can see what Trump's trying to do. Right, it's 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 almost like like, like it's yeah, not save himself. Yeah, it's it's not actually fucking the American Civil War. It's not the Confederacy. It's not the blue and the grey. It's Yugoslavia. That's what he's trying to do. You know, well, it's a it's about race. It's about politics. It's it you know it's not about where well, you live 
It's right. not, but but see, Warren, it's not for the other people. It's about those things. For Trump, mm-hmm. it's literally about self preservation. Oh, yes, yes, and yes, his yes. ego. Yes. Like you know, and I just was hoping with this whole COVID thing, and I know people are going to say I'm bad or whatever, and I know I've said I don't wish he died, but kind of I do. I do wish he died. I kind of uh, wish. No, he'd become he a martyr then. then. He'd become yeah, that's a martyr. that's the that's the issue again, and I also want him to stand trial for well, it. But I was just, hoping that at least. You know, because honestly, this is some shit that's happened here. He's they've let people die knowingly let them die. And they have taken we know now for sure intentionally taken children away from their parents when they came to the border after putting them in cages and lost them intentionally because they didn't give a fuck. Not just Trump, but the other people who were in our higher echelon like Rod, like Rosenstein, and I don't know if it's Steen or Stein, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to mispronounce that at this point, but that motherfucker, he he intentionally knew they were, yeah, he intentionally knew, he and Jeff Sessions, who was the attorney general at the time, knew they were taking babies away from their, like, mothers when they were breastfeeding, they didn't give a fuck, okay, and they didn't try to track them, they knew this, women at these detention centers in some places were taken and given hysterectomies against their will. Okay, we've known, and and from a guy who wasn't even fucking sorry, did that really ha- certified. Did, sorry, did that yes. really happen? Okay, yes, just, it absolutely to, to, has okay, happened. Okay, sorry, just I just want to say something. I hope people are keeping serious records because the reason why I say this: Do you know that people went to jail in the Nuremberg trials for giving yes. forced hysterectomies? Yes. This is this is not a joke. Doctors no. in the Nuremberg trials. Went, I just want to say this one more time. Went to jail for giving forced hysterectomies. If they, the they American government has found to do that, that... Um, we already have proof. And I want people to go and actually report these people to the fucking Hague. Because citizens can do that. We can report people to the Hague. They we will, can do that. They, they will, will come no. here and arrest some motherfuckers is what I'm hoping. Well, and hold no, them well, accountable. They won't, no, they won't. Maybe they won't. Maybe because, they won't. No, because you guys are not a signatory to these crimes. Um, in other words, if you're a Rwandan, hey, an American can say... Let's kill the fucker. But if you're an American, a Rwandan is not allowed to say, hey, let's kill the fucker. But as you didn't sign up to the fucking thing, right? Yeah, well, Which you know what? You I don't guys, give a shit. No, no, what people... I'm trying, no, what I'm trying to say, you guys can literally get away with murder. Well, we're doing it every day. Yeah. And it's getting worse and worse. And I don't give a shit who says that we don't have concentration camps here. We have fucking concentration camps here. And it's not the first time we've done it. Mm. So it's not too far beyond the realm of possibility to imagine it happening now. It's just worse now. It's worse now. Britain in 1900 created concentration camps in South Africa. All right? Yeah. Lots of countries have had concentration. This idea that it's only a German fucking Nazi thing. I'm sorry. The British invented the concentration camp. I'm sorry, British friends, but they did. All right? Um, So, yeah. Uh, All I know is happen. that this is not what we are supposed to be here in this country. And I know. No, I know. That they, I, well, well, listen, I get that our history that I was taught and that a lot of people were taught was a bunch of whitewashed bullshit of, of you know, American exceptionalism. But some of us are actually woken up. We actually realize it, and I don't know everything yet, and every time I learn something more, I'm more and more fucking horrified. But what I'm more horrified about right is what's happening right now, something that I can actively, as a citizen of this country, do something about if together we all stand up and say, this can't fucking happen here. Well, Because otherwise, everything that we've ever been taught and everything that we've ever believed that we are is all a bunch of bullshit. And... In many regards, I already know that it was, and it is, okay? I, in many regards, I get that. But it doesn't have to be for future generations. We can actually fix this shit if all of us actually give a damn and demand better and elect people who are better and demand better of ourselves and our entire country. So that's where I want to leave this. I don't want to... Yeah, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm no, very no, upset. no, 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 <laughs> not a, 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 another single word. Uh, not a another single word. What I will say is that um, 
my model railway is running like a fucking dream at the moment. Um, <laughs> like, um, I want to see like, a Gomez Adam style crash oh, on video. Well, I don't have, ha- I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't have a bridge. Um, I, oh. um, uh, I, I could tell people what my plans are for my railway, which will mean nothing on a podcast, so I won't do no, it. it won't. Um, no. So, um, but it, it's uh, eventually where I get where I want to be, which will be. I can't do until fucking quarantine because I need, I need fucking, I, I need my daughter's friends to come around and help me move shit, right? I need, <laughs> no, I, I like, I, I need fucking twenty year old men with their muscles to move this shit, right? I'm an old fuck now, right? I, I need them to do this while I stand there going with a cup of espresso in my hand or a glass of scotch, whichever. Going basically, no, 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 stand there, no, move. Okay, one step to the left. Yeah, step to the it sounds right, like right. the beginning to a porn. Right. You got to stop, man. I, I, right, right. <laughs> I, I've got, I've got to move this giant fucking fucking table up a set of dog led stairs, and it is going oh, no. to be, yeah, it's going to be a fucking interesting exercise. Can't you hire somebody to do it? No, no, no. Fuck me. It's what my daughter's for. <laughs> That's why, my, that's why you have children. Ah, I see. That's why you I have see. children. I can get my daughter to bring all of these fucking nice young men around who have got lots of muscles and stuff. But you can't right now, them. though. No, this You're is the problem. Crazy. I have to wait right. till probably next year because mm. Melbourne. Oh, fuck me. I'm going to die here, I swear. Fuck me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you say that, and I live in America. All right. No, we're getting no. off here. We got to yeah, end okay. this. All right. Let's end it. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> before Warren slits his wrists in fucking <gasps> desperation that, that's not funny. of fucking that's not funny. quarantine because he can't deal with it anymore. Anyway, um, all right. So, with no, 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 I'm only fucking being stupid. Don't worry. Uh, as I said, I have no sense of humor. I have no idea of etiquette at the moment. I'm fucking all over the place. Um, Warren is is has um um isolation syndrome. <laughs> I am. I'm going into fucking. Uh, is there a word for it in isolation where you go? No. What is it in Papillon? It, it wasn't in Papillon where um uh where he. That's he a starts... dog. That's all I know. It's a dog oh, breed. The... That's all I know. <laughs> the book. The book Papillon. Is it Papillon? I don't know what that is. No, I don't know. I haven't heard of that. They made a film of it with Steve McQueen and Dustin Hoffman. Papillon. Okay. Um, Yeah, um, I have no idea. uh, I haven't heard of that actually. When he gets put into he gets put into self isolation for twelve months, and it's so bad, and he's fed such bad food in isolation with no light for twelve months, his teeth and fingernails start to fall out. Okay, that no, sounds horrific. Um, You're going to give me yeah. nightmares. Am I um, got to go to bed. Uh, sorry. <laughs> anyway. It's just like midnight. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> like I, don't know. I just. I don't know about that movie. Viva Papillon. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> um, I'm going nuts. Don't worry about it. All right. We're, we're, we're going to say goodbye. It's a bit of a disorganized show. Warren yeah, will eventually it? get his act together when Warren None is allowed to fucking walk outside his house. All right. So, um, <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, all right. So, thanks. Uh, here we go. On the other side. Thank you for listening to the latest <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, they've got to try. Thank they've you for putting try. up with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say, cheers, big ears. Thanks for listening. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I guess I'm going to say, after a while, crocodile. <laughs> after a while, crocodile. <laughs> oh, if I love that. Prost. All right. Um, All right. Um, Okay, bye. Bye. We'll be back this week, I hope. (laughs) Oh, this is a mess. All right. We'll be back. I'm going to to finish this professionally. Bye. All right. Bye. We'll be back this week. Cheers, guys.